Hey, what's going on? It's Boss Brit, the most lit. What's up? It's your girl, DJ Excel. And this is... The No Homo Show. Where everything we talk about... It's homo's... Make sure y'all like, subscribe, and comment because we back at it again. Also, shout out to all our listeners listening to us on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Big shout out to our team, Revolt. Yeah, yeah. So we're doing a special episode today. This is our... Black History Month episode. We're gonna close out the month of February, Black History Month, with a legendary yes. interview with someone who paved the way for not only us, but a lot of people that's in Atlanta that call themselves lesbian from not even just lesbian, but just people in Atlanta in general. So I'm gonna go ahead and let you do the honors, okay? So people that may not know who you are, please let them know who you are and what you do. Mm, well. It's Black History Month. I am black. <laughs> I am, I am historical. And we got our ally here. Yes, sir. <laughs> What's up? She's she mixed with black. Excel's yeah. mixed with I'll a little be telling bit of black. Her she got black hair. She's Puerto Rican, not Puerto Rican. She's Puerto Rican. <laughs> Puerto Rican. <laughs> Puerto Rican. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm DJ M. Melissa Scott. Um, my claim to fame. Uh, I used to DJ some time ago. I do really, 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 really big events and really big festivals and really big parties and really big shit. You, you get it. <laughs> You get it. Hey, yeah. for the record, we ain't never seen M DJ. We want to see our DJ so bad. It's You're been our luck. partner for some Yo, years Yo, I just got now. booked to DJ like this for Calvin real? Klein, <laughs> this big thing. <laughs> a lot on my resume. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a lot on my resume. I just used DJ Excel's flyer to replace it with my face. Oh, I'm dead. They no, they they like, like, yo, ass. why your hands white? I got, uh, <laughs> never mind. That's a mean joke. That's a mean joke. I ain't going to This don't air to after, like, March. No, this is going to be our last episode of February. All right, Calvin yeah. Klein, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I think y'all should do a DJ battle. Man, I don't want to battle. We went into this and she was talking so much shit. It just got, <laughs> it started coming between our relationship. I, I will battle you. Like, I will you totally don't battle, battle you. You want to battle me, Em? Why? Why would you want to do that to yourself? Why would you do it to yourself? See, bruh. <laughs> Hip hop, no, hip hop, her. Bring out the it techniques. Like how you? Because it depend on what genre y'all play. She's going house with it. So if she play time. that house, she gonna kill you. I love you, Emma. I don't want to battle you. We should but, battle. Okay. It'll I be think fun. The city, no, no. I think the city will come out for that. Listen, that'll be fun. And at the end of the day, it's not really a battle. Yeah. It's really just for entertainment artistry. Purposes. It's for entertainment. It's yeah. playing music. It's for artistry. Y'all, we never seen Melissa battle. So I'm, I mean, <laughs> we never DJ, seen her DJ, DJ. at all. The last battle I had was DJ DJ Bombshell Boogie. That was my last battle. Oh, I love Bombshell. And who Bomb won? Show. Who won? It was, it was what I said. It was a display of artistry. Yeah. But I mean, the crowd was more hype for me. But. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got to invite everybody. I got to invite my amigos. Hey. You're, oh, you're, it's going to be a lot of Coronas <laughs> in there. <laughs> you're going to need to. Yeah, so let, let's. Um, <laughs> I'm a fucker. Let's set it up. All right. All right. Let's get hey, it. Y'all heard it hey, here. We can make it a thing. It could be me versus you versus like face or something like that. Okay. All right. I All like right. that idea. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, let's get into it. Actually. All right, and they got to be hype man versus hype man. Yeah. Who, who, who you calling out? Who y'all want me to <laughs> Who y'all want to see me? Who's on your level? <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> I'm fucking with you. Y'all tell me. You, can, you know what? You can just hype man all of us. Like at a silent, yeah, hype all like at a silent disco. All right, let's yeah. do a set, though. All right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not you cheating. <laughs> all right. All right, all right. So I feel like. You just gave very broad, but we're going to go more into it. Yeah, you, you know what I'm saying? Um, I, even saying doing the biggest of the biggest, like, I, we're going to go into it. Mm -hmm. But before we really get deep into the interview, we got a game called Skittles and Riddles. Play our theme song. We ain't get our theme song yet, all right? Yeah, it's <laughs> um, So you're going to go in that bag of Skittles and pull out. A Skittle. Are these it's, edible Skittles? No. Nah. Um, they're not real Skittles. Oh. <laughs> I got super it's a Skittle. It's a, <laughs> All right. And inside I, of it, it has a riddle. All right. So you're going to read that riddle. It is very much a lesbian riddle. All right. All right. And then if you get it wrong, you got to take a shot. But think gay. It's not true, though. What's not, not true? It just says, why do lesbians hate sports? It's just the riddle, though. So Not the answer sure. is going to be something. Okay, I, I have an answer. All, All right. right. Sorry, so I'm supposed to answer this? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Why do lesbians hate sports? Because it has too many balls. Oh. You know what? This would be up Melissa's alley, too. <laughs> That's like perfect. It has too right. many balls. Look, we all look. We don't ever get them. So. Yeah. We what number? Never. What number is it? That is number thirty-two. 
Thirty. Yeah, I don't even. I ain't even got nothing else against that one. I ain't you know got nothing. Too many balls. And if that ain't the answer, y'all motherfuckers is tripping. Brit, love a sport, boy. <laughs> I mean, I have more. I have more where that came from. Oh, uh, bro, you got another I answer? Can deep. I can, yeah, I can dig Go deep. Go ahead, another one. Another all right, one. All right, all right hold on. Let me think. Let me think. Why do lesbians hate sports? Um, because uh, let's see here. Because we don't like to cut the grass. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's see. Why do lesbians? This. Why do lesbians hate sports? Um, <laughs> because sometimes we're not that great at getting it in the hole. Why do lesbians? Why do lesbians hate sports? Um, oh gosh, because you—it's no tongue action with regard. No, okay. No, no, no. <laughs> She's about to go deep. Yeah, yeah, you gotta have right? Because it must. Uh, most involves balls. There you okay. go. You right. got that right. Oh, that's that's yeah. The most of all professional all answer. Balls. Okay. Yeah. I want you to know nobody has ever gotten any of these right. All right. You are our first good. person. You like that game? You're don't not you? doing another one. <laughs> like, listen, guys. Hey, don't listen. I'm still sponsorable. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, usually we take a shot when we get it wrong, but I guess we we'll take a shot because we got it right today. Okay. So. Fair. <laughs> Cheers. Up to it. Yeah. Mm. Woo. Mm. <laughs> all right, Miss. So this is probably like the most gay shit you ever gonna do in your whole entire life, and we really appreciate you for coming up here today. I wore a strap just because I, I didn't know what you were gonna ask. You have a strap on? I wasn't you? sure. I didn't but, know. How gonna, I didn't know how this was gonna go. <laughs> Melissa, ain't no way you got. Strap I didn't know how this was gonna go. I didn't know what you were gonna ask me. So just in case, all right, go ahead with the gayness. <laughs> I didn't, know. <laughs> I didn't know what was gonna happen. Like, yeah, we're gonna, we gonna circle back to your strap later on. Let me make a note about that. All right. So we're gonna start with your coming out story. Ooh. So let us know how was it for you? How, when, where, why did you come out the closet? Um, hmm. Oh man, I was so gay. Like, <laughs> everybody was you know what it was? Everybody was accusing me of being gay. Like mm. my parents, my friends, my family, everybody was accusing me of being gay. So I had no choice. I had no choice but to come out of the closet. Um, <laughs> me coming out the closet was me writing my mother a letter. Um, I wrote my mom a letter. Um, hey, the things you've been asking me, they're true. Mm. I, I am gay. I do date women, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I put it under her pillow. <laughs> and oh, I bounced. she slept on it. <laughs> <laughs> and I bounced. But I, because I know how my mama make up a bed. Like, it's, it's a full take now and it's a full yeah. reset, right? Yeah. All right, cool. Um, she called me and... She's like, I got your letter. And I was like, oh. she's like, okay, I got your letter. I respect it. She said, um, just stay away from me and my family. Wow. Click. And I, of course, I was, I was devastated. You know, I'm, living, I'm in college. I'm living in a dorm room at the time. Completely devastated. Um, I cry myself to sleep this night. But I wake up at like 5, 6 in the morning to, okay. I open the door. It's my mom. Oh, damn. And she has my favorite food. And she goes, you got to eat. Uh. <laughs> she hands it to me and walks out. And that's the last we talked about. <laughs> that was so it. So that was her yeah. saying she accepted. I know my mom. This is what happened. Um, knowing my mom, which we never talked about it before she passed away, but knowing my mom, what happened was she um, called her sisters or called her friends, like, you know, she gay. Da, da, da. Always. And somebody said something derogatory. Mm. And she's like, hold on now, bitch. Okay, period. <laughs> I just know my mom. Like, yeah. if they would have been like, oh, man, it's okay, she'd be like, hell no, nah, you know, gay, really cool, it's right. Christ. Mm -hmm. But somebody said some fuck shit. Yeah. And that's where she drew the line. They She's like, that's up. still my baby. That's still my baby. Yes, so, she should. That's where she drew the line. I just, knowing my mom, that's what happened. I could be wrong, but I think that's what happened. So what signs were there? Like you said, everybody felt like you was gay. So like, what were you doing? Like, were you play, playing basketball? I know that's one of the My girlfriend things. was my coach. I got turned out by my coach. Um, you got turned out by your coach? I had a boyfriend at the time, actually. And my, um, what are they called when they're like in college, but a paraprofessional, that last thing that they do before they get to be a teacher? I, I didn't go beyond my girlfriend at the time. <laughs> All right, my girlfriend was uh, the assistant coach at my high school, and um, she was my best friend. You know, uh, my best friend, right? Yeah, sure, sure. And uh, one day we was playing, you know how you had that basketball goal to the back of a door? We was playing basketball, and I like dunked and dunked on her. She's 6'4, by the way. Dang. I like dunked oh. on her, right? And Listen, she, how tall are you? I'm 5'8. <laughs> right. And she pulled me on her and she kissed my forehead and I punched her in the face. Oh. Right. And I walked home like a mile. All right. And you know, this is back when we had an answer machine. She left an answer machine message. Like, I'm so sorry. That was an accident. Da, 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 da. But I was like, all right, cool. Anyway, time progresses. It's back to my best friend. One day she kissed me. Mm -hmm. and I was like, all right, that's it. That's all we can do is kiss. <laughs> and one day she sucked my titties and I was like, ah! all right, that's it. <laughs> I ain't doing no more because I'm not gay. You know what I'm saying? 
that's gay. It. That's it. <laughs> right. That was it. The most I'll ever do is kiss and suck titties. That's it. <laughs> but obviously, do start you know, there. Do start at the titties. Right. But the uh, telltale be all like shit hit the fan was in a cafeteria my senior year. My boyfriend comes up to me with his homeboys. Like it was like you, you, I can't make this shit up. My boyfriend comes over to me with his homeboys, and I'm carrying my lunch tray in the cafeteria. And I went to a big high school. I went to Richmond Academy in Augusta, so it's like a thousand people. Mm -hmm. And he goes, "Hey, the whole cafe's like." Shh. He goes, "So you prefer this over this, right?" And the cap goes, "Ooh, right." I was like. That's not true. <laughs> like, no, but my 6'4 girlfriend is oh. in the cafeteria. So she comes over to him and is like, hey, nigga, I'll break your ass, right? She's 6'4, he's six feet. But she's yeah. like the faculty, right? Like, hey, hey, I'm, I'm her she bitch. She stood up for you? I'm her bitch. Yo, you feel me? <laughs> she her job. So is she like a stud? <sighs> yes. It's okay. It's okay. It's all right, Melissa. <laughs> my first three girlfriends were studs. <laughs> Freak two. Um, until I no, got my ass beat. Were. No, my girlfriend beat the fuck out of me. Um, oh, damn. No, right, right. Tragic you be story. laughing and you're like, oh. <laughs> right, like, hold on. Tragic story. Like, me and this girl are, like, watching TV and... Uh, it was this movie that had Halle Berry in it where like this guy bought her a nightclub I can't remember like risky business or some kind of business whatever and she asked me like what kind of girls do you like I don't fucking know I'm just happy to be here mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what right. I'm saying I don't know if I like stuff I don't know yeah. and I was like I like girls like that it was Halle Berry come on bruh uh, you know what I'm saying yeah. and I was like I like girls like that and yeah. she just unleashed on me she broke my nose damn she unleashed it's okay my dad broke her legs but anyway but she damn. unleashed what? she unleashed on me and but anyway, my dad broke her leg. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> she broke my nose, bro. Yeah. <laughs> All right, but um, yeah, man. So I, 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 at the time, then I was torn. I'm like, maybe I don't like. I, said, I don't know. You know yeah. what I'm saying? These studs beat bitches up. <laughs> it's the right. Same. So y'all ain't about to be no stuff again. <laughs> <laughs> this girl's six four. I'm five eight, yeah. and I'm seventeen years old. Damn, All right? that's crazy. So I'm like a kid. So I mean, I was very obviously very traumatizing. Um, yeah, right? for sure. But it comes full circle. I'm at. Uh, tracks like 10 years later and i'm like getting my dj equipment like out of the car mm -hmm. actually i'm putting it in because it's like four in the morning and i hear mel scott and i know that voice it's that bitch <laughs> right and it i remember like, let me hear literally <laughs> no and i'm that nigga at the time you feel oh, me? Like, I'm, I'm djm you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah. and i remember just feeling small yeah and i had to look mm. back and think what am i afraid of right now because i'm not afraid mm. of this bitch you know what i'm saying i got security da -da. yeah i remember being embarrassed that i was still gay at that like, time yeah no i was just like shit this bitch turned me out like i want to be everything anti her it yeah. was like a flashback it was feeling. weird it was like yeah. damn i'm still gay <laughs> well all right <laughs> like, it, it, yeah. it just was what it was so yeah so y'all ain't talked then um i started seeing her she ended up being like the drug dealer <laughs> at all the clubs so <laughs> do we know her uh, maybe all right we see like her around six four bitches i <laughs> Next know i go see six four drug dealer <laughs> right. i'm gonna be like you must maybe. be the one that turned melissa out. no but no nah, i uh yeah yeah uh what if it's uh i'm not gonna say it but what if it's uh yeah. <laughs> hey, my stuff was, was like, bad, nigga. Stop playing. Saying. She look like a uh, Excel. I was like, man. She look bad. That's why I made me the best I All right. Well, since we're on this, real quick, I just want to address the fact you have a son, mm -hmm. right? And when I originally asked you this, like, I, since I've known you for almost eight years now, like, mm -hmm. I see you post your son and stuff, and I just thought you were a young mom with a son, which right. a lot of studs has sons. Right on. But you said that wasn't, you didn't give birth to him. No. And that was, like, you and a woman had him. Right on. Can just you tell us question. about that? There we go. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> son, I'm sorry. <laughs> I know they've told you your whole life. Anyway, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> no, it took, my, my brother had to tell me what she, t she told him. So, it was this girl I was dating, obviously, in college. Mm -hmm. um, and she was a bad bitch from Atlanta. You know, I came to Mark Quinn, got me one. You know what I'm saying? Oh, oh not the Lady. Hey, the Quet, hey, the Quet used to have them baddies, boy. Okay. Back in the day, the Quet had them baddies. But anyway, <laughs> came to the Atlanta, got me a baddie at the Quet. So she used to come down to Atlanta, uh, Augusta, excuse me, and come see me, et cetera. And I remember my friend one day was like, hey, your friend, your girl, she bad, but you might want to talk to her about weight. I was like, damn, I noticed that too. You know what I'm saying? And be serious about weight. Too. I, yeah, I don't, she gonna hey, let your ass she hey, I don't like no. I don't like, no I don't like big girls. I don't. I don't like big girls. Anyway, whatever. So, I, I talked to her, and she's like, "It's something I got to tell you." But as soon as she said it, it clicked in my mind. Like, I said, like, "Are you pregnant?" She's like, 
I am, but I didn't know when I started dating you. Oh, um, okay. I was pregnant before. Da, 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 da. Okay, cool. Whatever. Of course, don't talk to me no more. I don't fuck with you. Yeah. Whatever. Because I like the girl. All right, cool. But as she's, you know, coming to term, like, I just stopped liking her, but I fell in love with him. Yeah. Like, I already knew. I just, like, I had named this dude before he came out. Like, I, I just, I knew I wanted his name to be Bobby. I, I knew that, but not Robert. Bobby for short. Just Bobby. So I named him Bobrick. <laughs> <laughs> what? Bobrick. Right. I don't know why she let Bobbert? me. Bobbert? Whatever. I don't know why she let me do this. What the but who cares? Bobbert? Um, and his first name. Who cares name... that baby care? He's a grown man now. I call him Bobbert. <laughs> well, I call him Bobby. but every... Y'all call him Bobby. But um, his first name, I loved Idrell the cat off the Smurfs. So his first name is Idrell. Um, and his middle name is Bobbert. He has an interesting name. But I knew I could always find him. Name yeah. Idrell Bobbert, right? <laughs> and lo and behold, at two years old, I decided I don't want to date her anymore. I wanted to date this other girl. And she basically told me they were a package. And with them being mm. a package, I had to let my son go. Mm. All right. Which I fought for him for years and years and years. I fought for this kid. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Um, but I found him on Facebook because his name is Idrell Bobbert. Right. right. <laughs> so what age did you find him on Facebook? At five. His mom teased me. Mm. Um, you bitch. Um, but I love you, Sam. I'm sorry. I know he we, was on we, Facebook we at passes. five. No, no, no. At five, <laughs> she calls me and goes, "Do you want to see your son?" Mind you, she moved, changed her number, everything. I didn't see him for like three years. Um, and she calls me like, "Do you want to see your son?" I was yeah. like, "Yeah." Well, he needs this. He needs that. Give me free five hundred dollars. Damn. Right. I no order. I don't just... care. I want to see my kid. Yeah. So I brought her five hundred dollars and get there, give it to her. I was like, "Where's he at?" Yeah. She's like, "He's not here." She played me. No, she nah. did. Yeah, she played it. Me. But she got the five. It's all, it's all good. Yeah. Um, then um, fast forward, like now he's fourteen, and I, I look like so I'm, nine years went by. I got changed all my passwords. Like all my passwords, my whole life were Bobby this, Bobby that, Bobby yeah. this. Just keeping in keeping in the loop with, with my kid. You know what I'm saying? Like I love this guy. Like I yeah. love, I love this nigga before he was born. Like. Like, I would see her, but I would see her face, but it would be like, yeah, you're just a carrier of my baby. <laughs> like, that was my baby. <laughs> my oh, baby. I love this kid, man. But um, anyway, I get on Facebook, and I see him, but I'm afraid to say something to him because I'm like, his mom may make him block me. Yeah. But I'm looking at his life. I'm looking at what he got going on on Facebook. Um, but then I saw his mom, so I, I, I hit her. I said, do you mind? I know it's been a long time. It's been 10 years. But right. do you mind if I reach out to him? She said, go ahead. So I hit him. I was like, hey, my name's Melissa. He said, he responds, I've always wondered who you were. Aww. I was like, whoa, why? He's like, I, f I always find your pictures under my mom's mattress. Okay? And I've always wanted to know who you were. Under the mattress is, is throwback. <laughs> yeah. That's where everything so, used to be. Yeah, I know. Birth certificate, <laughs> social security, right on. that mattress. So that's, what he, said, out he, that's what he says to me. And, <laughs> um, and it's weird. Um, so I ask, you know, can I see him? Da, da, da. So like two days later, she meets me in Atlantic Station where I live um, at, at Strip at the time. Mm -hmm. And I meet him, and it's like I never not saw him. It was yeah. weird. It's like he's 15 now, but it's like two is the last time I saw him, but it didn't feel like that. It felt like, like we was talking like I talked to him every day. Yeah. And so, like, um, maybe a day goes by, and like now this is like a Saturday. So Monday comes, and he calls me. He's like, I love you, and I'm so sorry. Click. The fuck was that? <laughs> so I called his mom, like, hey, Bobby just called me. She's like, what do you mean? He's at school. Anyway, he takes a gun to school for whatever reason, all right? So now it's turned into, I've known this guy now, again, like four days, and it's, Kenny, come live with you. Ken this, da 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 da, -da. Um, But I have a, a whole living girlfriend, mm -hmm. you know? Mm. And a three-year-old. You still had another baby, too? <laughs> no, well, you know, my girlfriend's kid. Oh, okay. Um, I'm claiming that one. Kids, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. So it was, it was all awkward, but, <laughs> that, but that baby must have been bad as hell. <laughs> Get your three year old, my son Bobby over here. I loved him from before birth. Nah, that's that's, and up. you know what's funny? That's how she felt. <laughs> yeah. Like who is this nigga? We like it, it caused problems between me and her. It was like a dad bringing it, like having a relationship and bringing up bring a new kid. kid. Yeah. yeah. That's fourteen. You ain't tell me about him. Yeah, either. but I, I ain't give a shit. Right. You know, pride was coming up in the month. Uh, you, you probably met him <laughs> so he's having the time of his life I'm building Soul Bar at the time yeah. um, he's helping me build like this is my guy I, I never missed a beat is how I felt Yeah. Um, but you know that's that's my guy that's my guy so um, that's, yeah. that's how that's how Bobby came about Yeah. that is an interesting story yeah. I never knew that the but whole, he told yeah. he told my brother cause you know doing pride my family works right my right. brother is security my yeah. aunt is this my cousin's the cashier you know yeah. how I go um, 
<laughs> my brother pulls me to the side. He's like, hey, you know his mama? <laughs> his mama told him. Uh, my brother's like, you know his mama told him that uh, y'all artificially inseminated him. Uh, <laughs> you know his daddy is. I was like. Damn. So he don't know his real dad. He don't know his dad. He does. He oh, does. Because okay. I was like, that's bullshit. We're not going to play that game. So you had to tell him, like, yeah. Because I don't want him to think. I never, ever want him to think I abandoned him. Right. Because I feel right. like his life would be different. Yeah. Honestly. No, no shade to his mom or anything like that. Because yeah. I love his mom, too. But his life would be different if he grew up in my house. Yeah. Or even grew up with me being in his life. His life would be completely different today yeah. than what it is right now. Like, he should be definitely playing in the NBA. He's an amazing ball player. But she didn't have the time or the bandwidth to develop that skill in him. I would have made that my priority. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's just, his life would be different. Shout yeah. out to Bobby. That is interesting, Bobby. man. <laughs> but he still turned out amazing. She, ra she raised yeah. the shit out of him, though. He's still, like, a, an amazing man. Like, he's an amazing man. He's so sweet. He's so kind. He's so understanding. Um, he's a sh and he's a strong man. Like, he's a good guy. Come on, strong yeah. man. Yeah. Shout out to Bobby. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's get into some Atlanta Black pride history because we honestly be learning a lot too as the years progress you know excel and i are, are well, i ain't gonna say we new to atlanta we've been in atlanta about eight years yeah. but we got into the pride scene about what was that 2020 what was our first pride? 2019 2019 mm -hmm. looks these oh i don't know when you got into uh, <laughs> melissa let me tell y'all something <laughs> Y'all know Steezo, because we, inter we interviewed Steezo. When I first met Melissa, she could not remember my name to save her fucking life. And I was Steezo for like a year or two. But on, when we interviewed Steezo, yeah. y'all chemistry was like... Yeah, twins. so I could see why you got us mixed up. <laughs> But it, it took Melissa like honestly, two years though, it to was, figure out you I'm you not Now that I know you both, <laughs> yeah. you look nothing alike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think it was the tattoo. Yeah, and it's dark. It was just see at night a lot, you know. It's like, <laughs> and you, really, I try you barely look up, you know, your eyes like looking down. Like, hey, Steezo. Yeah. <laughs> I don't make intense relationships with people. Yeah. Um, just because a lot of people, when they meet me, they expect something. They mm. think when they meet me, that their life is going to change. Yeah. yeah. Like immediately. And <clears throat> I make it a point not to really indulge in people until I really, really get you them. You sure I don't fucking do. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'll tell you what, yo. This relationship and, has been a process. No, no because... And just you just ain't no you don't know how she feel about you. Yeah, you cannot read Melissa. Until until ain't like no now now I feel like we grown, but it took years to grow. Like, do she like, like me or not? No, I feel like for the longest we just how like, did you feel that way? I like no no. So you would be like, I always say this. This was like the dopest thing to me. I DJ Pride. This was my first year here, and you had me like basically you pissed, you pissed headline. Off whole, you pissed off. You pissed off the whole world. Yeah, with that she yeah. basically had me headline, and at the end of the weekend, she texted it was like, "You did amazing." And I don't ever say that to people, right? And I was like, "What?" She fuck with <laughs> she me, right? Me. So then, like the next, <laughs> let's just say this is not like step by step, but mm. then we go up to her like, "Hey, M, like." Was like you got something else? Hmm. Yeah, I hit you, and you be like, "Bro, how do, how do this girl feel about you?" Oh yeah, and she fired me. And so like, so why like, you fire Excel? Ew. Is that not the best thing that ever happened to you though? Yeah. Where like, okay. you get fired from? So Listen. far. Four play, oh, not four play. That's when we started on four so, play. I yeah. love so far, by yeah. the way. Yeah. No. But, well, I had a partner. Yeah. And my partner felt different about the music that yeah. you were playing. You know it, what I mean? It ain't all. And. Things. I knew that if you stayed there and conformed to the way that my partner wanted you to play, that you wouldn't grow. Yeah. All right. Um, I knew that in meeting you, you could be great. So I'm selfish. So my partner may not love you, but I did. So I said, let me let her go so she don't hate me. And then when she grow, grow and blossom, I go get her back. Yeah, see, that sound cute, but it wasn't like that. So that's why I'm saying you don't know how a motherfucker feel about you. It'd be like, hey, we don't need you no more. Right. Holla. Holla, not holla. You no, I said eight it. years ago, holla. holla. Nah. holla I know, I, I know how to let people go when it's time to let them go. Yeah. yeah. Um, But I'm well, not let me shit. tell you, my rent was due, and that was half of my rent, so I had to figure and this had shit out. And had you told me that, I would have just gave you money. But... You know, I, I didn't well, know that. Well, I actually. What about today? <laughs> <laughs> Had you told me that, I would have just, I would have literally just paid your rent. Cause but the rent dude. for me, it's just, um, I know when to let people go before you get mad at me. Yeah, um, I feel that. <laughs> and I'll let you go, and then I'll let you blossom on your own, right? Yeah. To where it makes sense for what I got going on. I can only elevate. I'm one person. I can't grow and elevate without people. Yeah. It, it takes a machine to make Drake. Yeah. Drake is cool. 
Yeah. But you could be Drake. Okay, <laughs> if, if, if you had that machine that he has <laughs> behind him, behind you. Facts. Um, <clears throat> so I'm only as good as my team. Facts. Um, now, what makes me great is that I know how to find a great team. Yeah. All right. And it was time to let you go. You would have stifled it. If I would have kept you a soul bar, you'd have been resident DJ. Um, oh, you made rent. your little one, uh, one thousand fifteen hundred a week. Okay. And that would be like my rent would have been paid. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> I was living out in these streets because of you, Melissa. Nah, but moment. but but it, it 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 didn't. It wouldn't have. It wouldn't have made sense because you got to remember, I got to get out of soul bar too. Yeah. We only had six tables. Facts. Okay. It, it was lit. Tables in that it was lit. It was a lit six tables. Look, it only had six tables. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It did only have six. Tables. More than who got away? <laughs> it was lit though. You know what I'm saying? I take that little thirty grand a week all day, yeah. but but it only had six tables. So I gotta get out of here too. I gotta get. You gotta get over here. You gotta go over here, and then together, I'll, I'll meet you back here. Yeah. Nah. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. I never really took it personal, but <laughs> just to make a long story short, it. You are a very unique person where you don't know how Melissa feel about you until until you do. Yeah, until she tell you. know what I'm saying? You. But back back to the yeah. Black History Month of Atlanta, uh, Atlanta Black, Black Pride. Pride. Weekend. All right, so um, how did Atlanta Black Pride Weekend come about, and what was the gay scene in Atlanta like prior to Atlanta Black Pride Weekend? Yeah, right on. So um, Atlanta Black Pride Weekend is 27 years old. It's older than... Uh, Older than, not me, but older than <laughs> my understanding I'm, I'm of Atlanta. I'm there on, on, on right. um, yeah. it, You know, it started by Trax. And uh, I, I say Trax, but the people in Trax, Philip Boone, mm -hmm. uh, David Hamp. Like, it was a bunch of people that got together that started Atlanta Black Pride Weekend, which was, it was Labor Day weekend. They went around, it was actually a barbecue, a backyard barbecue was how it started. Oh, okay. And they would go, they got the bright idea that let's go to Birmingham and Macon and Fort Valley and invite people here for Labor Day and do this party. So that's what they did. Mm -hmm. um, and then it got organized by um, Henri, who started this nonprofit called ITLA, all right? Now, Henri passed away, but, um, and then ITLA kind of fell apart, like they were misusing money, just just mis just mismanaging the whole weekend. Mm -hmm. Me, there's a woman named Lisa Cox, who had this company called Girls in the Night, okay? Mm -hmm. Man, they threw the look. Man, I have never seen no lesbian parties like this lady threw in my life. Out here in Atlanta? In Atlanta. Okay. Um, she started in Miami, though but it had some troubles down there but then moved to atlanta but those parties that she threw were iconic um the difference is they didn't have instagram and facebook at the time yeah but there was nothing like them these are the parties i went to with the lisa rays and the gabrielle union what year was the, this uh, just for context um for context it would probably be um 98 Damn. 97 i was like five 97. I was gay, though. <laughs> um, 96, 95. Yeah, I was gay. I was gay. Yeah. Because I was in college. Um, you come up here, man. It was bitches in the ceiling. Never mm. seen nothing like this. In the, you know, I've never yeah. seen nothing like this before. I'm Especially like, in like a gay. Yeah. Gay Social media yeah. like fucked up. Damn. The craziness so of clubs. You, it was, but you, you knew about it. Yeah. You know, she was doing this shit with no Instagram, no Facebook. No emails, actually. Damn. Um, I started the damn texting. That I started texting. Yeah. I was the first person to text. I'm talking about gay or straight. I was the first person to okay, text. Okay, soldier boy. Um, but right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let's, 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 let's talk like about it. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Let's talk, let's talk about a club texting.com. Yeah, come on. Um, so, yeah, no. Um, and, I mean, she when I say she had this shit lit, like, it was crazy. That's how I met Trina. That's how I met Lisa Ray. That's how I met Gabrielle Union. That's how I met Stacey Dash. That's how I met Rashida. It was all through this party this lesbian lady was doing. And so I was the DJ. That's how I got in the mix and that's how I met these people because not only was I the DJ because I was so tech savvy and business savvy, mm -hmm. um, I also managed the artist. So I became actually a booking agent, not just for her, for a lot of people in America. I became a booking agent for them. Mm -hmm. um, and then after that, um, I was DJing at this club called uh, Club Miami. Uh, I hear you talk about it a lot. Yeah, for her. And I'm literally just DJing, but she had kind of uh, fallen off with regard to just her follow-up, just some bad business deals she'd made. And um, the owners of Trax approached me, uh, which was uh, Philip Boone, Duran uh, Robinson, and uh, this guy named Homer Hammonds and Ron. They all, literally, they bombarded me in the booth. There's nobody in the club. They come to the booth like, you should do a party. I'm like, what do you mean? Um, they were like, you should do a party, like a girl party for Trax. And I was like, mm, I gotta ask Lisa, girls in the night, because I'm DJing for her currently at the moment, right. at the exact moment, I'm right. DJing for her. And so, um, okay, I thought about it. Uh, eh, I'm not gonna do it. They came back the next Friday. It's like you should do this party. 
And I don't know at this time, they're out in Atlanta Live kicking shit. Like they're doing two, three thousand motherfuckers at Atlanta Live on Saturday night. Damn. All right? That's a whole nother story. Um, Atlanta Live, Dreams, Mansion. Oh, okay. I wish I was here when all that was Those open. owners are now life. Okay. Oh, right. okay. So Got that's why it. they show so much love, but I'll explain that. Got in more time. it. All right. Okay. So they come back. I was like, you know what? I'll do it. Maybe. Let me ask Lisa, my boss. I call Lisa. I was like, hey, can I do that? You know, they want me to do this girl party. And she goes, hmm. look, I don't care who you do a party for. Purple, green, white people, I'll support it. But she's a nasty graphic artist, this Lisa Cox, Girls mm-hmm. Night. I said, will you do my flyer for me? She said, of course. So I, I booked Uzi. Y'all don't know Uzi, but she's a dancer. All right. Mm-hmm. Uzi's like the hottest dancer on earth at the time so she does a flyer for me i book uzi you know we're good we're good da, 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 da. okay I, I don't realize i'm really pissing her off like i don't realize this okay cool yeah I would but i'm thinking the wackest flyer. I the wackest flyer. <laughs> was the flyer good at least it was what she does it, okay. was, it was good okay. it, it was in black and white Okay, black and it white. Was the it was cool. It was in the 90s. Actually, everything was in black actually and white. I found this flyer like a week ago, like and transitioning out of my storage. But That's anyway, <clears throat> I was like, okay, great, got the job. Hmm, this club holds seven hundred people. How the fuck am I getting anybody? Nobody knows who I am. Okay, all right, but I do know how to write software. I, I can write in seven languages, by the way. Just FYI. Oh, anyway, yeah. so um, <laughs> we learn more stuff about her. Everything. So I come up with the idea. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> I get up and I, my girlfriend and I, we hand out flyers at tracks, you know, and we hang out flyers. And I was like, I, let me get their phone numbers. So I start creating this text list. And this is in 99. Okay. So I'm creating this text list. Or maybe 2000. Text list. Tessa. All right. So now I ha- literally have like 1,000 uh, phone numbers. Damn. Mm-hmm. Cool. Fuck, I'm going to do with them. I was like, all right. What is a text message? So do I do research on what is a text message? How do you make it? How do you text? How do you text? A text message is actually an MMS message. It's actually an email. So my number is 44483, right? Mm-hmm. I have AT&T. It's at att.net. Okay, cool. You got at my, my um, metropcs.net. You got my sprint PCS. You got uh, at att.net. You got all the different ones, right? So I'll take that one number, and I wrote the software that would email all of them. All right? That's Whichever one genius. didn't bounce. <laughs> right. We're Whichever reviewing one. a genius, ladies and gentlemen. Like, <laughs> Whichever software. one didn't bounce, I knew that was who you had. You had T Mobile. Yeah. Right. You had Metro PCS. You had ATT. Whichever one didn't bounce was, was the good one. Mm. So I made a separate list now of the good ones. And then I would use email. And that's how I text people Hey, we got a party this Friday at Club mm. Miami. And I. I do text remember website. like the so, stuff being linked to yeah, like yeah. it's, it's an MMS. It's yeah. So I remember literally doing it one day at Tracks. Like mm-hmm. I had the email go out, and I remember everybody was looking at their phone like, "What the fuck? I'm gonna text about a party?" You know? <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, no one was texting. Yeah. There was no club. There was nothing like that. There was no texting at the time. That it was direct still, it was still, connection is crazy. Ella, hello, was still uh, H. <laughs> that, that's how texting oh, was. Oh, like, yeah. you got to hit the, the number. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. So, hey, we would know the fuck out of that. At the time, there was this um, <laughs> football team in Atlanta called the Atlanta Explosion. They're a professional women's football team. I think they're called the Phoenix nowadays. But, um, and uh, TC, I got with her and I said, hey, you guys have football practice today. It's Friday. Why don't you, I'll give you a free bottle. You know, come to this party. Mm. Um, and they got there. It was like 40 of them, which is nothing. But it was 40 cars because none of them rode together. I said, Can you park in the front? <laughs> and it's like nine o'clock, right? Yeah. So when 10 30 hit, it's parked, in, it's packed in the front, and everybody got these text messages, right? Mm-hmm. So I ended up doing like 900 people that night. So oh, my very first, like my very first party ever, like, like yeah. outside, like we ended up setting up like barricades outside to put people in the middle. Like it just was insane. Damn. And that, that was it. It was out of here after that. So then yeah. when Trax seen you do that, they wanted you to be a part of their team? So we came up with a stupid-ass name for the girls. It was called Another Family Affair. Okay. And that long as fuck. Yeah, it was. That Another Family like Affair. record label. So like Another Mary Family Affair <laughs> was doing these big lesbian parties at Club Miami. They were crazy, right? Cool. And then one drunk-ass night, I was like, why don't you just call it Trax Girls? Yeah. Oh, fuck around, just call it Trax Girls. Like, that's so simple. It right. is. So, like, literally, it was like the end of the night. I was like, we should call it Trax Girls. 
So that's what we came up with Tracks Girls. Like another family affair was so long. Yes, it um, was. Sound like a step cousin. It, it probably like it, honestly if you go to anotherfamilyaffair.com right now, it probably goes to Tracks and Girls. But yeah. it just that's how we came up with Tracks Girls. Like one drunken night, just like why are we saying another so long, it's so long. We call it Tracks Girls. Yeah. But I felt um so I had my resume, now I'm doing these crazy parties, you know, thousands of women like every week. Then it, it got even crazier because the person I partnered with was managing Young Jeezy at the time. Uh, you had Coach K and you had Marlon that owned Club Miami. Uh -huh. So there would be this little room in the back that in Club Miami could stay up at five in the morning. All the other clubs in the city closed at three. We would call it the straight corner, okay? Mm. <laughs> so <laughs> it would be a big ass that. lesbian that's party. Crazy. But when all the clubs <laughs> closed in the city, yeah. all the celebrities. So that's how I got in touch with Jeezy, Puff Daddy. Um, uh, Keish Cole, they would all be in the straight oh corner. God, so they come Cole. to this gay event, but there's it's girls. It's designated, not gay. You yeah. know, gay is different than girls. Facts. Right. And they would come in, and they I just remember it would be a walk. They walk through like, oh, all these bitches, and then they get to the straight corner. <laughs> yeah, right. So it, it was it just was what it was. <laughs> yeah, that's where Sherelle came from. Mm -hmm. um, Sherelle that now uh, operates Opium mm -hmm. and Alibi. Oh, okay. That's where she came from. Um, you heard of the, uh, business hungry as fuck. All the all the businesses. Yes, yes. That's Chris. That's okay. where he come from. Marlon, that's where he come from. That's where they all come from. This ain't this party. That's dope. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, so, history. Yeah. Oh, and so neither here nor there. Like, um, but that's how we really got things moving. Celebrities were always there. Uh, you know, I did the party with Lil Wayne. I did the party with Amber Rose. Like, they were always because it made sense to bring them to the girl party because it's also we got a straight corner with all the celebrities. Yeah. Yeah. So that's when like, was it like this needs to be? Cause uh, let's get it, let's get it right, y'all. Atlanta has a big pride, a huge parade, everything. Right. When did when was it like, yo, we need to make it Atlanta Black Pride? It it was Atlanta Black Pride before me. Um, okay. All I did was organize. It fell apart. It completely fell apart. Okay. They had no money. They had bad credit all over the city. Um, I was doing the biggest, uh, you know, the biggest parties. My parties at the time were doing four thousand people, easy, like easy, easy. Yeah. Barely drop a flyer. We was doing four thousand girls. Damn, I wish um, I was around back then. Yeah, <laughs> the difference is that um, I had money. That, yeah. That's honestly the difference. I had money. My daddy had money. Um, I had money at the time. I was making like two fifty a year writing software. So I just had money. Um, and they were just broke. So and had zero organizational skills. They had were making bad business deals all over the city. No hotel would mess with them. Um, and me being the green person that I am and not knowing any better, I invited them into my space. I was like, oh man, what they want? You got bad credit? Use my card. Damn. You got bad credit? Da, 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 da. And they played me. Ran that shit wow. up. Ran it up. Woo. Left the bill, didn't give a shit. Woo. And now, what are we, 15 years later, like I just had to, just had a lawsuit with them. Um, to the Damn. point to where I now own the trademark to Atlanta Black Pride Weekend. Yeah, can we talk about that? Like, so yeah. I know you, cause, Y'all, we do Atlanta Black Pride Weekend together, but I know like you were in a whole battle. Well, you do know this year's World Black Gay Pride, right? It's yes. Here. Okay. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I thought it was in DC. It's here. In Atlanta? We got it. What the fuck was you gonna tell us? <laughs> I mean, we just made it official today. Goddamn. Business partner, like, yo. Well, that's great yeah. news. Yeah. Why did you have to fight for Atlanta Black Pride? I had to fight Atlanta Pride too. Okay. Um, in my years of writing software and sitting in that cubicle for hours at a time, I didn't know what I was doing. I just didn't know what I was doing. So I just started buying trademarks. I bought the trademark to Atlanta Pride Weekend. I bought the trademark to Atlanta Pride. Atlanta Pride thought they had trademark Atlanta Pride. They did not. They actually just trademarked their logo. Okay. Wow. I bought the trademark to Atlanta Pride. So I own the trademark to Atlanta Pride. And they didn't realize it. And one day they did. And all hell broke loose. Because your name come up when they look who owns it. Right. So I owned Atlanta Pride, I owned Atlanta Black Pride, I owned Atlanta Black Pride Weekend, I owned Atlanta Pride Weekend, I owned all the trademarks because I had money and I had no nothing to do but buy a trademark to website. <laughs> I owned my sex flicks, I almost owned Netflix. I, owned, I dropped the fucking ball on that. Um, but I was just buying things um, because uh, Legal Zoom had just came out. So I was just buying things. You know they make it easy. Like, they made it easy yeah. and blowing up. And this is, I was day trading. Um, this is when they deregulated oh, okay. gas. So I was day trading. I had made like, 20 bands because I had bought some scanner gas. Like, it was just, I was just buying shit. Like, yeah. had no idea what I was doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Until the cease and desist started coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't use this name. Well, actually, I can't own it. Right. Um, but in in fairness, um, my attorney, Melissa, give, that, give them their trademark. 
which was fair. I, Atlanta Pride. Oh, you did it. Okay. I gave them their trademark. Okay. Like, duh, what am I doing? But they tried to come for AtlantaPrideWeekend.com. I would have been like, I remember that. Come I get remember it. that. <laughs> How much you got, bitches? So they don't pay you for it. You just hand it over out of respect. Who's Real like, talk. Had I had, had I had the attorney then that I have now, yeah, they probably would have had to give me like about five hundred bands. Yeah, honestly. they should. Yeah, my attorney then was friends with their attorney, and See? was just like, you don't want to run your attorney bill up. Just let them have Atlanta Pride, and you can keep your website, and that'll be the deal. But then they almost tried to make me sign a deal where it was, when you go to AtlantaPrideWeekend.com, yeah. it was a landing page, and you had to choose Atlanta Pride oh, or Atlanta nah. Black Pride, right? And I was on my way to sign that deal on, um, their, the law office was in uh, Colony Square, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know what the Lord had, in, or the universe had in sight. I ran into Bishop Allen. Mm. Uh, which is the homie. Yeah. And, and he's like, what are you doing? I was like, man, I'm going to sign. He's like, oh, you will not. Right. He okay. said, you will not. That's why we still own Atlanta Pride Weekend .com. Wow. He said, you will not. And he's a pastor. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, I listen, listen to him. Pastor. Right. <laughs> yeah. And my attorney was like, no, no, no. It's just going to be a landing page. Oh, he said, nah. no. I'm glad no, you didn't do that. No, you will not. Yeah. And I went with it. And I went with his gut. And that's why we still have Atlanta Pride Weekend .com. Um, Atlanta Black Pride. Um, it's always trouble with that group that went bankrupt and I saved them. They ran yeah. up my credit. Like, how you, how you suing me? You got a balance with me. Uh, like, what? <laughs> yeah, you got I was like the IRS, man. You got a balance, money, dog. Money. Yeah. Like, you got a balance. What are you talking about right now? Yeah, yeah that's so, crazy. So, um, that cost us about 100 bands, actually, to fight that case. Because mm. their attorney was pro bono, trying to support a nonprofit. Mm. And that's how I met Jazz. <laughs> My okay, attorney over here, we paying 20, 30 bands a month. Sheesh. But we still own, we own the trademark. You know, it is what it is, and it's only right. And mm. we bought the trademark and own and control the trademark so that I don't, I'm a true believer, and nobody can own Atlanta Black Pride. You can't own that. Mm -hmm. That would be me saying, oh, Excel and Brick can't do Atlanta Black Pride. Capone and Prada can't do Atlanta Black Pride. So and so and so. That's stupid. Mm -hmm. You can't own Atlanta Black Pride. So I bought the trademark. I fought for it so that everybody could have it. That's yeah, I mean, it opened up a lot of doors for a lot of people. Yeah. You but know, it, it, it just irritates me sometimes when promoters <coughs> try to come for me personally. Or like, you see, I'm doing a Friday night. You'll start a Friday night around the corner. Like, why the fuck would you do that? Right. Mm -hmm. Like, put it on this goddamn trademark so, so that you can do your weekend. Mm -hmm. I did this for all of us. Mm -hmm. And you guys are shitting on me, not even understanding that if it wasn't for me, you wouldn't even be able to do the things that you're doing right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so that always irritates me. So you, I know, Britt, you think I'm rough sometimes, but that's why I'm rough sometimes. Because I'd be like, mm -hmm. what the fuck? Like, why are, you, why, are you, why are you doing this to me? Like, I'm nice to you. Right. Not you, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah nah, yeah. niggas don't be having no um, integrity out here. And, and I've learned just from speaking to you a lot of the doors that you did open to where we can even like you just said mm -hmm. come down here and be like a Lennon Plyer weekend like y'all don't even know the fight behind having to go through all the shit you went through to even be able to own it to where we all can say this is our weekend yeah. and we all eat how the fuck one person, one group gonna own Atlanta Black Pride? That's some bullshit. Yeah. First of all, you weren't even here. You didn't start it. My homeboys did and my homeboys said nobody can own Atlanta Black Pride. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, to the point where um, the um, Keisha Bottoms, which was the mayor before. Shout out Keisha Bottoms. Yeah, right I stressed her out, man. Hey. I loved Keisha, though. Yeah, she was the mayor before Andre Dickens, which is the current mayor. Mm -hmm. She started this thing called the um, LGBTU Advisory Board. Yes. Okay? So prior to that board, they didn't have... Um, they would do a, 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 a pride reception, an Atlanta pride reception, mm -hmm. which would take place in October. And, you know, I'm like, what about Black Pride? <laughs> you know? Correct. You know, y'all like five ten years in what's, what about us right. right and Malik Brown who actually worked for Keisha at the time um, shout out to Malik um, he was like well alright let's do it so we did the first um, myself and the board that I work with did mm -hmm. the inaugural Atlanta Black Pride mayor's reception oh that was the first one that was, that the, was first like, one. What? the one I invited you to was the yeah. first one yeah. oh I didn't know it was that yeah, we're only like four years in oh, oh yeah. Yeah. what yeah. happened it, to the open bar last in. year though yeah what, you, what know, you, know us. you know us you know us I was like yeah I know I'm about to Give me they a had uh, it was a slight <laughs> oversight. Uh, oh, they literally, right. no, no, it was weird. They literally forgot to apply for the liquor license. 
Damn. I know that man. sounds weird and because you're right here at the city. Right. But it was like the day before and you literally cannot get a liquor license. Yeah. They day. can't break the law. You can't break the they law. They are the law. They are the law. They are and, the law. And we could have broke the law. Yeah. We could. Right. But that's all we need is for the press to get a hold of that. True. Like, and it makes they operated this with no liquor license. So what we did yeah. do was came to my restaurant, Truth, mm-hmm. and the mayor's office bought out the bar at Truth Midtown. I did hear that announcement. And that's yeah. why everybody was, we. that's why it was such a big party at Truth after. That's why uh, you was looking stressed. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, we got I, enough liquor? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I found out at the event. Yeah. yeah. So the decision was made while we're in the middle of the event, while everybody's performing. Yeah. So now I'm over here staffed for, you know, the dinner, yeah. not knowing that we're about to have an entire <laughs> LGBTQ festival come through. Everybody was in All right. All right. All right. So let's talk about some struggles, like just in the past too. And, and before I get to that, name some people that you booked because I know you booked you booked Nicki, Nicki Minaj before, right? Mm-hmm. This motherfucker booked Nicki Minaj. So yeah. just talk about some people that you call early on in their career that are now like A list celebrities. Mm-hmm. Um, Nicki Minaj, I, I, I love the Nicki booking. I wish um, I was there. What I loved about that booking was um, I have a picture, this one picture, that um, will explain what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. I remember the girl I was dating at the time, she's an introvert. You stay with a girl. That bitch, stay Melissa. with a bitch. <laughs> All of her stories, she keeps saying, they my girlfriend the at the time, girl. my girlfriend at the Most time. of that story was the same girl, though. I dated her eight years. Oh, okay. Yeah, we okay. were together for eight years. But <laughs> my girl at the time, she was super introverted and didn't give a shit about nothing I was doing yeah. other than supporting me. Mm-hmm. And uh, I remember looking at her and be like, Nikki's coming. She's like, she's literally, she's sitting on a stool. She's the only person I allowed on the stage. Yeah. And she's like, oh, cool. <laughs> She was reading a book. <laughs> reading a book is crazy. I mean, and I remember like, like are you see. fucking serious right now? <laughs> right. And she's like, what's wrong? And I was like, nothing. <laughs> she's like, okay, you okay? I'm like, yeah. She's like, okay. And she went back. <laughs> For what it's worth though, she was reading this book called Ender's Game. Best movie I've ever seen. Ender, oh, yeah. Ender's Game. Amazing. All right, whatever. All right, so this is what I remember. Standing on stage and my back is to this DJ booth. Nikki comes out that side. This is the crowd. What I remember seeing is the crowd being like, and it looking like, you know that wave that they do at the Braves game? Mm. Where it's like, yeah? yeah. I just remember the crowd being like. And I was like, Nikki must be coming up behind me. <laughs> like, I didn't even look at her. I was like, Nikki must be coming up. Because <laughs> I just yeah. saw the crowd just light the fuck. They didn't even know what they were happy about. Yeah. And there was a picture that was taken. Um, we started this company called Shine Hog. Mm. Shout out to Shine Hog, yeah. Yeah, I partnered with this company called ATL Picks. Shout and uh, Prince Williams. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was like, I keep putting these big ass parties on my website, but they gay. <laughs> I'm like, what you want me to do? He's right. like, but I said, but you put my pictures in Hip Hop Weekly magazine. You put my pictures in Essence magazine. Mm-hmm. What you saying? Right. He's like, well, no, maybe you should make a gay version of ATL Picks. I'm like, all right. So that's where Shine Hall came from. Oh, oh so come on, history. Yeah. Yeah. We're getting lessons up here, y'all. Yeah. Shine Hall is a gay version of ATL Picks. It is ATL Picks, actually. Wow. It just is where we house, it's where we house our LGBTQ. Uh, information. Oh, okay. Right. Interesting. But it's the same photographers, same company, same editors, uh, same smug mug account. It <laughs> just, you know. Right. All right. Interesting. But there's this picture that was taken. And when you look at the picture, it that that night we did about 4,200 people. Damn. And you can see, like, the crowd. And there's not one face in that crowd that's not like this. Yeah. <laughs> like, not one. Yeah. Right. That, to me, is a, is what makes me her, I guess, whatever right word it is, as a promoter. She's a cat lover. Okay. <laughs> a cat lover right? That's what makes me, um, that's what turns me on. That's nah, what makes me it right there. Like, looking at pictures where niggas is 4,000 deep and they smile and they don't know what the fuck they happy about. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, shit like that is what makes my wheels turn. And Nikki, I had to make Nikki leave the stage that night. Y'all didn't know that. Uh, oh, you weren't there. But... How old was I? She did um, I like four school. or five songs. She wanted to do ten. I was like, Damn. You got, yeah, I was like, you gotta go. I, I could feel the pressure in the room, pushing, pushing. Well, why'd you say she had to go though? It there was, was about a, to be like I had okay. So this particular night, I knew how crazy it would be. Mm-hmm. So I had built the stage. I had built a uh, thirty-two by twenty-four stage. So thirty-two wide by twenty-four stage, right? Mm-hmm. And I had built a VIP stage on the side, which was 16 by 24. I put a gap in the middle just in case some niggas went crazy. Mm-hmm. They wouldn't run up on the stage on Nikki, right? And the whole time she performed, I kept seeing something out of the corner of my eye and I looked and it'd be gone. And I was like, hmm, mm-hmm, whatever, <laughs> right? And just at one point I just walked over and I looked in the gap. Oh, 
<laughs> it was just people. They were injured. They were hurt. Oh, they was not shit. paying it. Just walking and just shoo, mm. shoo. <laughs> and one person broke the arm. It was my, it was my first time being sued. I got eight law, eight lawsuits that day. Damn. Damn. Um, it's my first time buying insurance. <laughs> what a cool right. thing. It worked out All right. And uh, I was like, oh shit. I was like, ugh. <laughs> And I looked at the crowd, and then those happy faces were now, oh, everyone's mad. I'm like, because yeah. the whole crowd was yeah, pushing. pushing them. Yeah. Like, I could barely breathe, actually. Yeah. Oh, like, it, it was the air was taking out the room. Yeah. And I was like, I got, I told Safari, I was like, Safari, this got to be all right. <laughs> Safari. Right. Yeah, Safari. Oh, that's right. Safari was a hype man. Isn't that that's crazy? hilarious. I didn't think about that. That was her boyfriend at the time. Yeah. And I told Safari, I was like, yo, we got in this. Yeah. And he was like, really? I was like. He looked in the hole. He said, "Oh shit, are we gonna go?" I was like, "Yeah, <laughs> okay, Damn. right." Yeah. So that's why we ended that show early. But I sent him. But but she went over to tracks, yeah. which was seven thousand deep. Damn. And so like but, yeah. tracks girls is for the girls, and then tracks is for the gay guys. Just for anybody who has it. At the time, yeah, tracks is uh kind of they're a little more retired now. Yeah. You, uh, I, I partner now with a company called Rockstars. Fact. Shout oh, out Rockstar, to Rockstar, Juju. Juju. Yeah, we yeah. love Juju. Yeah, so we do, the guys are with Rockstars now, and the girls are still with Tracks Girls, and of course, um, obviously, I partner with you guys. Yes. yes. Thank you for that. Right. All right, let's talk about Chris Brown. Chris Brown. So let's talk about that night. Yeah, because you booked Chris Brown, but it didn't go as you probably wanted now, to Now, this go. night, I DJed <laughs> this night. So oh, I did can kind of, yeah. Okay, so Chris Brown night, I actually booked Chris Brown and Tiana Taylor. That is okay. a badass combo. Tiana Taylor, um... Uh, they were at a concert together, Chris Brown and Tiana. Uh, Tiana opened for Chris Brown at uh, Wolf Creek. And so they were at the show. Um, the whole thing with Chris Brown was, it can't be no men at the party. can't be no men at the party. Da, 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 yeah. da. Okay. So there's this company. Do you remember the weekend in Vegas called Tempted to Touch? Yeah. Yes. Mexican Joe. He <laughs> buys a $10,000 section. Okay. Oh, Which, you know, he spent 10 bands. I got to make it a nice section. So I elevated yeah. a little bit. Right. Um, Tiana uh, and her crew come out and Tiana performs mm -hmm. yeah. or actually she's there a while. They're there a while before they actually hit the stage up there early. Mm -hmm. Somebody from her crew, um, was it Mike Lighty? Um, Chris Lighty. Mike. She, she named I thought it was Chris Lighty. She named <laughs> uh, rest in peace, Chris Lighty. Yeah. Um, comes out and I know he called that, that crew because I get a yeah. call from the guy that booked it for me and he's like, it's niggas there. <laughs> and I was like, Ain't no niggas here. The nigga's Mexican, right? It's Mexican <laughs> Joe. They not. He's like, <laughs> hey, niggas ain't Mexicans. Yeah, not coming to no party with no niggas. Damn. Right? I was like, that's not cool, man. Like, it's people here, you know. Yeah. So I, Tiana, Tiana Taylor's mom was there, and I'm pleading with the mom. Like, can you call? Like, and the mom is like, man, I don't know why Chris doing that, but Tiana's here. She's gonna perform for you guys. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Tiana gives me a half-ass show, not mm -hmm. understanding she's pregnant. Okay. Oh, wow. Didn't okay. even realize what was going on. But anyway, so Tiana comes out, gives her show. People want to see Chris, but I don't want to tell nobody Chris ain't coming. So at the time, there was a really hot artist out, like hot at the time. Hot. So I called Sherelle, oh, the girl from Club Miami. I yeah. was like, because all the celebrities go to her club, right? Uh -huh. This is a straight club. I said, who in your club right now that I can get like 10, 20 bands to? She looked around. She goes, shit, nigga, Fetty Wap here. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I said, tell that nigga I give him eight bands. He come over right now and do a show. That's lit. She's like, hold on. I hear muffle, muffle, muffle. Yeah. He on the way to out. Right? <laughs> That's lit. Fetty Wap comes over, right? Yeah. Fetty Wap was hotter than Chris Brown at the time. True. He had trap queen Fetty at the time. Wap yeah, was Fetty Wap hotter than Chris crazy. Brown at the time. Was so Fetty Wap pops up and just tears the fucking place up. Right? That's lit. Cool. So that that's how that night went. Yeah. But um, Chris Brown team. Not mm -hmm. Chris Brown, because we say Chris Brown. This right. is team. His team. Um, I feel like Chris don't even know nothing about this goddamn show. Probably not. Probably That's what probably I've been not. learning a lot of time. Like the artists don't be the knowing. Artists. They yeah. don't be knowing because a lot of bucks stop with me when it comes to Jocelyn. I don't even take her a lot of shit. Right. Um, so Chris Brown uh, team uh, is like, you ain't book us. So I had put down a twenty five thousand dollar deposit. Mm -hmm. So I was like, uh, send my money back. They was like, yeah, nah. All right, cool. <laughs> okay. TMZ calls. All right, because <laughs> TMZ Harvey. want the scoop. No, nah, like Harvey call, not TMZ. Harvey. Oh call. damn. Okay. <laughs> the head honcho. And it's like, what have? Um, uh, they was like, we're running a story for you. So I sent them the contract. They was like, yes, because the contract is what it is. Right. So he ended up showing up at Mansion, which is my partner's, mm -hmm. but not showing up at my party. I was mm -hmm. like, that's odd. Same contract. So you don't have my money? Because mm. we all sent our money together to the same banking account. 
same contract. One stop was here, one stop was mansion. Yeah. Same contract. What's up? You know what I'm saying? So then they sent the money back, um, and now we're outside of what year is this? It's 20, what year is like 2016? What years now? 15. 24 now. They had to Only be five like years. No problem. Cool. So uh, they paid me, TMZ ended up paying me like five bands for that contract. Um, but I'll, I had like five years. I couldn't talk about it. But so TMZ right does now. pay? Uh, it depends on how lit it is. Okay. Most of the time, no. Chris they pay Brown, for pictures and things like that. Yeah, they pay for that. Brown school, yeah. Um, so that's why the shit went so crazy on the new Instagram at the I rem- time. I remember seeing and that. Yeah. Vine. Vine yeah. yeah. That's why it went so crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah by the way, um, <laughs> that's, that's where I met Young and May before she had. Ooh. Okay. I have like a selfie with her just because she from she up gay, north. You I, gay. Nah, I oh, just okay, used to be tuned into her freestyles. Yes. Yeah. You gay, my bad, I gay. thought you was like Young and May. That's a whole other story. Yeah. Young Ma. Young Ma. Um, I didn't know who she was. Um, Erica. Um, you know Erica. E Child. E Child's right. She's like, man, this is lady named Henny and Holes. She lit. <laughs> that she definitely lit. was her Instagram name. Henny and like Holes, her. man. This you need to get this. And I'm, you know me. I always act old. Like I don't know who any fuck body is. Yeah. I don't know who anybody is. <laughs> not on your if radar. Ain't Whitney Houston, That's I don't know the everything. Not on my radar. <laughs> look, look. If it's not Whitney Houston or, or Jocelyn Hernandez, I don't know who the fuck they are. Okay, right. <laughs> Whitney Houston or Jocelyn. Right. Right. I see what you mean. Whitney there. Houston or Jocelyn Hernandez. I see I don't the comparison. Know who they are. Or Beyonce. <laughs> you know, I love you. Beyonce. Only right. Beyonce now. Hold on now. So we got Whitney, Beyonce, <laughs> and Jocelyn Hernandez. Okay, period. For me. All right. So um. She's like, yeah, man, this is a girl named Henny and Holes, man. I'm telling you, she lit. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, the fuck is that? Right? So I go to her Instagram. I'm like, all right. And at the time, I think she wanted like $1,500, which to me was way too much. Yeah, for this girl, I didn't know who she songs. was, you know? Yeah. And then I look on, um, was it Snapchat or Vine? Vine. Probably or something, I don't know. And I remember um, this girl just singing like, um, you call me heaven I call her heaven A. Ooh, right? And I was like, damn, that's lit. What song is that, right? Yeah. Trace back to Henny and Hoes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, right. So I called her manager, booked her, you know, of course. But people didn't really know who she was at the time. Mm-hmm. This is, hold on, lies I tell. That happened after the fact. I booked her just on Erica's strength mm-hmm. first, just because. I'll, I'll do that every now and then. Yeah. And I, she just... Her manager was just like, damn, y'all put me on a party bus, which he didn't know I own these motherfuckers, so. Right. But he felt like I spent a shit ton of money, put her on a party bus, da da da, da. <laughs> But again, I, I own this shit, so. Yeah. Right. Facts. Running with it, right? All right, cool. Facts. So um, he was just thankful that I did that for her. Yeah. So then when the song came out a month later, it was, I, I got her for like nothing, like five bands. You know what oh, I'm saying? Oh, so the song wasn't even out yet. No. When you nah, heard. What, like mm-hmm. that's what I'm saying. When she was there, that Nothing. song was not popping. It came out like People a month and a half, maybe two was. months later, yeah. Mm. And then, um, I mean, she had a little like buzz, like how like some lesbians out here got like a buzz, but she yeah. ain't have a hit. Had a not like she had nothing like that. Nah, she was lit though, but she yeah. had nothing like that. Yeah. So then when it went crazy, um, I ended up booking her at uh, at the time I had nothing going on, um, just like some little random parties. I booked her at Phase One. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like. I called I think Angie. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. we were there. I, like, I called Angie. Yeah, and Angie Shout was out like, Angie. Yeah, I called Angie, which I've never done. I've honestly, I had never met Angie. Oh, uh, really? Before that. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. But I mean, she, I knew who she was, or maybe I had met. You know how I am with knowing yeah, yeah. people, right? But I, she knew who I was. I knew who she was. I had her number on my phone. I called her. It's the only club I knew it was open on a Saturday. I knew she was in town on Saturday. Yeah. Um, doing a concert and. He did it for like I think her book of the time was like twenty five bands. He did it for five. Um, yeah. He's like, you the one gave me that bus. You show love. <laughs> you ain't know who the fuck we was. Yeah. Come on. Uh, yeah, so that's that's, that's, that's how we ended up doing that. Um, I remember that party too. My, yeah. yeah. That's hard. That party was crazy. All, yeah, I remember. Yeah. yeah. Ceiling was low, tight shit. Ceiling was low, right? Boy. We were standing on shit. Yeah, y'all was standing. Everybody like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I remember that's I remember, crazy. I tell, it was me, Mimi. <laughs> yeah. Yo. Yo, we are at Starship right now, y'all. Listen, they have anything you need for inside the bedroom, plus more stuff you can't even think about. Make sure y'all go to the website. Yes, yes, y'all get 15% off with our code No Homo Show at shopstarship.com. No Homo Show shopstarship.com go run it up y'all listen if you're in atlanta stop by their store because it's crazy but if you're not online got everything too plus more for real yeah i'm about to grab me something to go back up real quick because see y'all know a lot of y'all don't even know this side of melissa a lot of y'all know her from loving hip-hop 
Can we talk about love and hip hop and how you actually got on there? I got tricked, actually. <laughs> um, no, no, no. Uh, Her stories I, be yeah, giving a little. No, I got tricked. I, I got tricked. I mean, I, once it was, was what it was, it was cool. But yeah. um, I, I was my my dog, my my fam at the time, not no more. Was uh, this girl named uh, Carly Red, and um, she saw the money I was making. You don't off fuck of, with Carly Red no more. Fuck no. Nah. Okay. Um, Damn, Carly. Yeah. Um, she at the time she um, saw the money I was because she was stay, she was staying with me. Your her house was far. Mm -hmm. So I made my whole decorated this empty ass bedroom I had for her, um, and she saw the money I was making off my buses and things like that. She's like, "Why don't we buy a Sprinter? I'm always renting sp Sprinters from other people." Yeah. And so we partnered mm -hmm. on a Sprinter, mm -hmm. and so um, you know I paid my part, she paid her part, cool. And she was like, um, "Tell you what, we about to start filming." Now I am fucking Mimi at the time. Me, me. But me. but 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 that's just our private business. It's not. For me, it's not me for love hip hop. It's just a bitch I like. Right. She was cool. Um, she, she was a cool girl. Um, Carly is like, um, cool uh, and me and Jocelyn are cool at the oh. time as well. And how'd you know Jocelyn? She's my neighbor. She was your neighbor? Yeah. She Out here in Atlanta? And where I live right now. She lives like a couple doors now. Oh, wow. And plus, um, I booked her. I was the first person to ever book her in the, in the world. Like, I just saw her on love and hip hop like the first time. And I was like, I think this lady could be hot. And yeah. so I, I booked her. And so that was her first booking. Okay. Um, but so that's how we met. And she was mean as fuck to me. Um, she was horrible. <laughs> and then Joss was, she was horrible to me. She was fucking horrible. She's a bitch. A nasty bitch. Stevie J was like, all right, what's the problem? Uh -huh. And she was like, I, I know what it was, though. She, well, she told me. She's like, you want my man. I was, she, ah! thought she, she thought you wanted Stevie J? Because one of my stud homies was fucking both of them. And so when she see me, oh, she don't, man. she don't, y'all, y'all fucking she don't it up. She don't yeah. differentiate to her. I'm a stud. I want to fuck him too. Right. I was like, girl, you got me confused with one of these other niggas. That's bitchy. hilarious. Yeah. I was like, you man. only date studs, not men. <laughs> <laughs> I don't date no studs, bitch. Right? So um, Stevie was like, what's what's the problem? Yeah. You know, like he, we had an event at Opera one day where I booked him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And she popped up like on some whole shit, like on some like what the fuck up bitch shit. And Stevie, mind you, uh, let me stop with all that. Uh, and I ain't gonna do that. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you later. All right, I'll tell you later. I'll tell you later how fucked up the situation was. But anyway, Jocelyn pops up, um, and I'm walking them out, and I'm like, all right, see you, see you later. And she's like, Ugh, oh bitch. I was like. Ugh. And Stevie's like, hold on, you're going to stop this now. Right. So Stevie's the reason that me and Jocelyn are cool. Shout out he to was him. like, you're going to stop this now. He's like, what's the problem with him? I was like, I don't fucking know. I never did nothing to her. Yeah. And she was like, she just want to fuck you. I was like, ew. <laughs> I said, sweetheart, I'll fuck you all day. But it was back when she, he was cheating on her like crazy probably. So she probably just he got was on, a lot of I shit I put it like on. this. He was on a date that day yeah <laughs> and we had to get that bitch up out of there yeah. <laughs> right okay Ooh, so she thought anyway. every woman around him yeah it wasn't like that, that. it wasn't yeah. like that at all so anyway me and her was cool after that mm -hmm. and then he brought her to me like to halo yeah he brought her to halo one night it was like yo we trying to do this so after that point going forward joss and i've been cool um we, it was a roller coaster <laughs> it depends yeah. on who i'm cool with she cool with me but yeah. you know it's been a roller coaster yeah but um back to the subject at hand yeah because we're gonna get to jocelyn in a minute but yeah. Just you being Carly on Red, love and hip hop. Yeah. So she um, said, I tell you what, let's uh, do a scene where we're getting a sprinter company started. That's a great idea. So we could, we could put the sprinter company on love and hip hop. <laughs> yeah. I was like, great idea. Uh -huh. Cool. So they pick you up. You know, I don't know if y'all know how love and hip hop works. They pick you up in the van. You don't know where you're going. You don't know who you're filming with. They just tell you the type of scene it is. You outside, you inside. It's restaurant, club scene, dinner scene. They just tell you what it is. You don't know who the fuck you're filming with. Uh -huh. Unless it's like something serious, then they'll tell you. So they tell me, get ready. I get in the van. I get to this house, a mansion. I don't know who fucking this house. It's supposed to be Carly, allegedly. Cool. I sit there. They're like, all right. They show you the way love and hip hop works. They show you a picture. It'll be a blank picture. And it'll be like, you sit here. It'll be like this room. And it'll say, you sit here. Somebody else can be sitting here. All right, cool. So I walk in. It's Jocelyn. Mm. And the first thing she said to me, why the fuck you ain't tell me it's feminine love and hip-hop, ho? <laughs> I was like, I, I'm not. And she's like, there's cameras everywhere. What the fuck you mean you're not? I'm here, bitch. Yeah. I was like, no, no, no. You don't get it. I, I came to film with Carly, uh, the, the sprinter. And da, da, da. she's yeah. like, shut up. Anyway, bro. Hey, boo! Good to see you. I'm like, the fuck is going on? Like, it was such the twilight zone for me. Like, yeah. it was such the twilight zone for me. And um, 
So I do the scene. It's cool. Then the next day they're like, all right, um, uh, you got a DJ that you're gonna bring down, which I said, Mary Mac. And they were like, no, redo it. Da, da, da. All right, so we do the next scene, which is now um, I get to this fucking club, bro. And this bitch is like, I got a baby with Kirk. I was like, Kirk who? Damn. Captain Kirk? She's like, Kirk Frost. I was like, okay, what the fuck is going on? And now I'm, I'm panicking. Cause I'm like, Kirk gonna think I set him up. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm shaking and I was like, I gotta call Kirk. Call! <laughs> so if you watch that scene, I'm like, oh! I'm like, Kirk's standing right here and he grabs my shoulders. He's like, you need to calm the fuck down. <laughs> Cause I, when I said I was freaking the fuck. I gotta go back to the out. archives. I gotta go back and watch it. He's like, you need to calm the fuck down. Yeah. That's what he's whispering in my ear if you ever watch that scene. He's like, you need to calm the fuck down. He's like, they do this to you. And he's like, I didn't know they was gonna do this to me tonight and I know it's not your fault. Yeah. So Kirk, shout out to Kirk, nigga. <laughs> He's just like, I know you. This is not your fault. You have nothing to do with this. Like, Damn. and I ain't seen Kirk like four years. Yeah, <laughs> but he my dog. You know, yeah. Rashida my homie. And so I, I'm just like, oh my god, why would they do this to me? Why? Why would you bring this girl? She she said she got a baby. And she, she she said like this, <laughs> this is how I almost said like she she she, she said right. <laughs> and he was like, you need to calm down. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh shit. So I'm all traumatized from that scene, whatever. Then the next scene they throw me in. It's just like when I say back to back to back. Yeah. That night, that night after I'm traumatized, Carly brings this girl named Sierra, Sierra. to um I think I remember her. Sobar. All right. Okay. Cool. Sierra's so sweet. She's so nice. She's dating this guy. Oh, she's married to this nigga named Shooter. All right. Okay. Oh, that's Sierra. Okay. Yeah. So she's so sweet. She's the nicest lady I ever met. <laughs> right. <laughs> cool. So the next day I'm on set. I was like, oh shit, Sierra. I didn't know you was filming Love and Hip Hop. Cool. So it's this big video scene with Jocelyn and the girls. Mama D is cool, right? Hi, Mama D. And then this lady, uh, lovely Mimi, walks in and is like, yo, your husband fucking some other girl, right? I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> it's just, at this point, I'm done, job. right? <laughs> so we walk. Jocelyn's like, I got to pee. All right, walk to the bathroom. Sierra's fucking, once we hit the corner, Sierra's bawling, crying. And she's like, um... You know what the fuck, Melissa? What the fuck, Jocelyn? Y'all, why'd you invite me here to embarrass me? It's for me to find out my husband fucking somebody. And Jocelyn's like, she's pregnant. She's just like, baby, I'm so sorry. I ain't know that's gonna do that to you. And Sierra's like, yeah, you did. Like, why would you do this to me? And Jocelyn's like, you know what? Next time, read your contract, ho. Come on, <laughs> Melissa. And walks off. I was like, okay. That's when it hit me. What the fuck, love and hip hop was. Yeah. Because <laughs> all of us, it, the other shits was fucked up. Yeah. But when that happened, I was like. This is fucked it's up. Messy. And I remember when the girl told uh, Sierra, Lovely Mimi is her name. Lovely Mimi told Sierra, your shooter's fucking Mariah, which was the best friend. Mm. And I looked around and production, this is how I'll never forget. I remember watching one of Bruce, he went, yes. And I was like, oh, you dirty motherfuckers, <laughs> right? But now I understand production. Yeah, that was yeah. big. That yeah. was huge. That was so like, yeah. what, what was up with you and Mimi, though? What you mean? Like, so, <laughs> so like, even like later in the seasons, like you and are, I didn't it, go on. It, a, I didn't. I never, ever, ever went on Love and Hip Hop with the intent of dating Mimi. Mimi and I were dating. So that was real, though. Let's be clear. Was that real? And even the beef with Ty Young. I, I don't have no beef with Ty. I, I, I. It, it, listen. Mimi and I were dating. It wasn't for the show. It you had nothing to do with the show. And on the show, <laughs> I never. Was you hitting that? Of, of course. But my <laughs> point is that. Um, <laughs> with, you the with, producer, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Tell him you was hitting that. Say no. Like, <laughs> yes. <"Nah." laughs> I used to love fucking Mimi. Like uh, I used to love. Fucking Mimi. One of my favorite pieces of pussy. I ever oh, wore, like, God, I owned it. Of but, pussy. No, but 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 um, but that wasn't a point. Mimi and I was dating. Before Love and Hip Hop, mm -hmm. well, but not her before Love and Hip, me before Love and Hip Hop. Um, I didn't go on Love and Hip Hop to date Mimi. Right. Matter of fact, when I went on Love and Hip Hop, I lied about even knowing her. Mm. Like I lied about it, uh, and I felt bad because uh, I felt really bad because she started making it seem like I was talking. Uh, because producers were talking a lot about it, and then they started making scenes about me and her fucking. Oh, okay. And then one drunk fucking night, one really <laughs> drunk night, Caught you Carly. I was having trouble getting to my door. And she's like, best friend, I gotta tell you something. I was like, what? She said, Mimi asked me asked me to bring you on the show. I was like, what? She said, I mean, I told her I was gonna do it and I asked her, was it okay? And she said, man, do that shit. So, and it's my first time ever saying that. So it was never yeah. about the sprinters? 
Nah. It Damn. wasn't ever. We never ever did a scene about this first. Y'all never even did the to this fuck day. scene about this. To, to this, this day. day. To this day. To this right. fucking day. So, um, Damn, she bro. and I feel kind of played because I, I I loved Mimi. I cared for her as a friend, right. as a person, as a human. Um, and I'm like, you bitch, you played me, and you tried right. to make it seem like it was me right. uh, that was doing some weird shit. And uh, it was a night where uh, Mimi used to pop up on me like all the time. She just pop. She never called. She just pop up at Soul Bar. She never tell me she's coming. I remember them days. She yeah. was there. Her and uh, Aaron used to pull up. Yeah, yeah, before, they just yeah pull up. before you yeah. fired me, I remember they, they was there. The they would just pull the fuck up. I got up. a few videos with I, them. I never knew. I never knew. Yeah. And this particular day, I was behind the bar, and I just look up, and she's just right there. And I'm like, hey, what are you doing here, babe? She's like, oh, my friends, um, George and his homegirl. Um, we had went to some game or something, and they told me they were coming to our, uh, to Monday. We had the Musician Mondays where they had the band on Mondays. Yeah. Um, we just came to listen to music. Um, some, some, some. I was like, oh, okay, well, you can sit over there. All right, no problem. All right, cool. Maybe 10, 15 minutes go by. Ty Young comes in, and she comes over to me. And I know Ty just from being in the club, not, I don't know her personally. Yeah. She goes, hey, is there, um, damn, it's packed in here. Do you think me and my girl could sit somewhere? I'm like, shit. Hmm. <laughs> I was like, oh, you could sit maybe here. And I told security, you know, make a table for Ty, her girl. <laughs> so the club starts to thin out. And Ty's yeah. sitting there now with Mimi. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But it, it, it's a very look, interesting look. night. This is one hell of a night. <laughs> it's one hell of a night because I'm also fucking my bartender. And she's Aww. hanging around. Um, <laughs> uh, you are <laughs> rabbit. No, no, no. Brittany's there, right? Um, <laughs> she's no. she's no. <laughs> I is, fuck with you. <laughs> which, is, uh, which is my sweetheart now. So, you know, Slim Sister. Yeah. That's, that's my sweetheart. That's my baby. Um, yeah, you she's um, there. <laughs> And then the other girl that I just stopped dating was there, honey. Um, <laughs> shout out to Pink Zebra Boutique. <laughs> All right. So shout out to the name job. Now man. there's nobody there, but now Mimi, yeah. Ty, Brittany, and honey. Like, this is what I tell you, this is the most craziest night of my fucking life. And shit is just, when I say getting real, like getting real. Like, it's just a heated fucking night at this point, right? Yeah. And I'm like, hmm, okay. Okay, 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 okay. All right. For <laughs> whatever reason, Stevie J walks in. Nah, <laughs> okay. Stevie popped right. up too. Stevie's there I'm too. No, everybody, remember, everybody used to pop up. So yeah, far, for real. Right? Yeah, that was the spot. And we're in the kitchen. I actually have this on video. We're in the kitchen. Uh, and I'm like, yo, what's up with uh? He, he said something. He's like, yeah, I'm trying to get Mimi a storyline because Stevie don't know we fucking. He's like, I'm trying to get Mimi the storyline with this ball player. I said, what? What are you talking about? Oh shit! I was like, I started with a ball player. And that's like, my bitch. I, I, I was like, I don't like that. He's like, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm thinking like he still don't know because we're not, we don't, we're not out like that. Yeah. We at the crib. We we go out, me and her. Yeah. We go out with the crib, da, 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 but we don't, we not out in public like that. Yeah. And he don't know, and so he's like, yeah, I think that's that's gonna work, right? And I'm like, I'm on Instagram, I'm like, this nigga gonna hook my bitch up with a fucking ball player. He's like, yeah, that's a good idea, right? <laughs> like. So, anyway, so that's kind of how that started. And then I asked her, I'm like, what's up with you? She's like, man, a kid. Man, it's a child. I don't fuck with you. She's like, I fuck with you. I don't fuck with you. ain't for me. Girl, you done the whole ass been engaged a couple times. Like, yeah. come on. You fuck with Shorty. Yeah. Um, and then um, it got to a point to where she started uh, accusing me of things just that just weren't fucking true. Yeah. Just trying to make excuses. Yeah, yeah. like, because we're filming. Oh, trying to create, you know? Drama. Yeah, but like, shorty, I ain't with all this. I don't have to do this. I, I, my, my bread come from somewhere other than love and hip hop. Right. Yeah. So, just tell me what's up. Like, you're my friend. It was a day we just seen um, Mimi uh, had actually stayed at my crib this night, right? And <laughs> she's like, I filmed today. Yeah. I'm like, I filmed today too. Mm. I was like, oh man. So, but you know, but you know, they filmed different places, two different crews. Da, da, da. Right. right. All right. Cool. So we're filming at my house. Me whoever I'm filming with. But the day before, I just filmed at my house with um, Tammy, Carly, and Arian. So to me, that's normal to film in my crib. All right. All right. So they, how they do, they come into my bedroom. Hey, they show me my picture of my sofa. <laughs> and they're like, you sit here and the other person is going to sit here. I'm like. So you ain't know who come to your damn I thought house? It was, honestly, I thought it was going to be Tammy or Estelita yeah. at the time. Carly, maybe. Who knows, right? All right, cool. So they're, I sit on my sofa like they told me to. And. I'm like, oh, open this door. <laughs> okay. It's me. <laughs> Bitch, we just fucked. Why the fuck you ain't tell me? You pulled up to my crib. Why you ain't text me? Hey, I look like I'm filming with you. Ugh. So anyway, I open the door. I'm like, mm. 
hi, me. And she's like, Melissa. And I'm like, oh, boy. Here we go. Yeah. And she's like, um, so um, you didn't tell me you was fucking with Arian. You fucked Arian. Da, 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 da. Now, mind you, the very first thing I ever told me was that I fucked Arian. Yeah. Because they're friends. You know what I'm saying? That's I the very, very, and very first you thing. You are outside. Yeah. No, oh, my God. This was years ago, though. This yeah. before I, even, I never knew Mimi at the time. Yeah. yeah. So... Um, <laughs> You know, I tell her. Get out of that pussy in a letter. No, no. So, and I, and I tell her like, is it cool? Even Aaron, I'm like, Aaron, you know, I like Mimi. Like, is it cool? Yeah. And she's like, I don't give a fuck. As long as right. I don't fuck with my money. That's what Aaron said. Mm-hmm. And Mimi's like, I don't give a fuck. I like you. All right, cool. So, her confrontation of me and break up with me or break it off with me and not break up, break it off with me was because I fucked with Aaron mm-hmm. and I'm fucking mm-hmm. with Jocelyn. Mm-hmm. All right, but of course oh, me. You was fucking with Jocelyn? No, she the homie. Oh, okay. Yeah, and so like, um, oh. hey, she the homie. <laughs> fucking with like yeah, you know, yeah, fuck yeah, with. yeah, yeah, yeah. Dog, so yeah. I am like on some now at this point. I'm just kind of like, okay, shit. So I always told Mimi she don't love hip hop anymore, right? I don't have not watched. No, Mimi's not. I haven't on seen there. her. Okay, I haven't good, seen her. Good, good. Carly on that bitch. Uh, Carly, whatever. But Mimi, I always promised her I would never fuck up her gig because that's her gig. Yeah. And so when she's confronting me, you fuck Arian. I'm like, now you know good and well. I, you know I fucked Arian. So, but I'm not yeah. gonna do that to her. Right. Because she's filming and that's my bitch. That's I fuck with line, her. Yeah. So I just said, that's your best friend. She should have told you. You're lucky to have met me. Like, oh. it is what I'm talking like. But in my mind, I'm thinking like, yeah, bitch, really? And she storms out. And I remember that day, I was holding back tears. I was like, but well, one thing I'm not going to do is crown this motherfucking <laughs> Beyonce's TV. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'm not going to crown this goddamn TV. Y'all got me fucked up. But I remember I was taking some deep swallows. I can't yeah. believe she did this shit. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah. That's Wait, did, so did did Ty take your bitch or what? How did Ty uh, end up I, with Mimi? Did she take your bitch? I guess though? so. <laughs> I guess the fuck so. If you want to look at it that way, I was doing a lot. From though. your perspective, though, like were y'all done or like were y'all still dating? When- um, I, I will say this. I will say this. I will say this. I, she, Mimi and I would be on dates, and this chick I was fucking with would pull up on us and be real, real, <laughs> real rough. You know what I'm saying? Like you she was. You so me out. I was tripping. Like I was tripping. Yeah. Like um, I was. I, you, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I, I remember one night we was at like uh, soul bar, like like four or five in the morning, and Shorty just pulls up and sits at the table with us, like on some. Y'all yeah. fucking? Oh. And I remember Mimi lied for me. She had no reason to lie for me. I was wrong as hell, and she was just like, "No, we're not fucking. Who's <laughs> fucking?" <laughs> 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 And I'm weak. I don't even know why she. I don't even know why she did that. We never talked to. Her. I don't even know why she did that for me. Yeah. Because we kept fucking after that. But I don't know why she did Mimi that. Mimi a down ass bitch. She was a down ass bitch. Yeah. And so, but at the same time, I am fucking other bitches. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if. Don't and let then, the tech world fuck y'all head. I don't know. Is fucking yo bitch. So <laughs> nerd my ass. Take nerd my that pussy. Take my bitch. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I can't really say that because then I also started fucking with Jasmine. Um, yeah. So uh, take that's a strong yeah. word. Yeah. Strong word. Like y'all kind of just ended. You was already doing it. It was perfect wrong. timing. She, I was wrong as fuck. Yeah, yeah. Ty was single and Ty had stopped dating um, Cappy at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the ball player from um, Chicago, where the fuck they from. Um, and it just, I, I was wrong. Ty was probably the, honestly Ty was probably the better bet for her mental oh, at the time. That's, that's so big of you looking back. Yeah. Go ahead. But I don't know why Ty had beef with me because I've always been nice to Ty. Right. Yeah, you know how lesbians. Well, motherfuckers get. got beef if you fuck with their girl. I mean, but that wasn't her girl at the time. Uh, I was fucking with her. So, so girl. Yeah, she had no reason to have beef with me. But I've never had no beef with Ty. I always thought she was cool. If so. anybody we should be mad at you, because y'all was fucking and then you come around. That was uh, mad. About, I wasn't shit. mad about you. you that anybody, wasn't shit in that relationship. It sounds like <laughs> right, pretty much. Dude, I wasn't mad about nothing. I yeah. wasn't mad. I was. I no. I'm saying anybody should have been mad. Like what, Ty? Why you mad? Like she shouldn't have been mad. Yeah. And uh, I remember saying this to her though. Uh, there was a scene where she was acting mad, and I just remember being like, "Why are you mad about your girl? It's like your girl." Yeah. I'm like, "It's your girl." Like you want that? I'm not 
coming for your girl. It's your girl. Why are you mad at me? Right. <laughs> How you mad at me and you got the bitch? Right. Yeah. <laughs> How you mad and you got the bitch? Right. Like, what the fuck are, are we mad about right now? Right. Nah, so, but, um, yeah, nah, but she, um, we never had no beef. I think Todd's cool. I think Mimi is an amazing person. She just. So I feel like that was the introduction to the world. Cause even to this day, we people like when we're at a restaurant, people be like, "Aren't you on Lo- Love and Hip Hop?" Which right? is so weird. I only did two seasons. Right. The third season, I ended up cutting my entire. We filmed like thirteen episodes, mm. but I was engaged at the time. Mm. Yeah, you sure and was. They, they kept telling. You still, <laughs> owe, you still owe me a bottle of champagne. <laughs> I gave you, I gave you for your engagement. I was wondering, do you are you supposed to give those gifts back? No, I was wondering. No. I, I thought hey. that engagement party was so legit that I you had it. a it nice was engagement party. <laughs> nice weather. People was dressed was, up. My engagement party was a shit. Wasn't <laughs> it was it? legit. <laughs> Great. Did you hesitate to like call it off because you celebrated the engagement party, or was just like fuck? I it. felt bad. I was just like, should I give these gifts back? But I just said, next time I get engaged, I won't have an engagement party. That's all. Right. <laughs> but um, like, like if you got five kids, don't have no more fucking baby showers, bitch. Yeah, right. right. Wait, <laughs> get them hand me downs. Okay. Okay. Nah, I, um, Say that bottle of champagne for next time. Yeah, nah. I'll be there every time with a, sh- a bottle of champagne okay. for you. Well, no, nah, we was filming. Um, we filmed the next season, like the whole season. Okay, and they kept telling my fiance ass. They kept telling her, um, "We need you," because Carly was my dog. Yeah, and they kept telling her, "We need you to be cool with Carly." And every time she would see Carly, she tried to fight her. Oh my god! Um, because of poop. Yeah, because she was friends with Pooh. Shout out Miss Pooh. Yeah, but no, Des, what the fuck? Yeah. And so she ended up getting both of us kicked off the show. <laughs> she ended up getting both of us kicked off the show, oh, and then shit. it got to a point—not kicked off, but it got to a point where, where they wanted me to be like the bad guy. And at the time, it was Pooh was saying Carly was fucking hurting her husband, and Carly was saying it wasn't true, and I'm the only person that knew the truth. What's, What's the, the truth? truth? And they wanted me to tell the truth. Tell it today. Never gonna do that. Are <laughs> right. you a real nigga? And they wanted me to tell the truth, and I rather I just quit because I'm like I'm not coming. I hire him, which was Pooh's husband. That's my homeboy. Yeah. Pooh is my baby. Carly was my baby. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember Carly just begged us. She begged her like, "What is your problem with me? Like Melissa's my best friend. Like, yeah. what the fuck is wrong with you? Why are you being mean to me? And she's being mean to Carly. I keep trying to fight her. And then Carly's my friend. Yeah. It would be like every time you see Brit. Um, your wife trying to fight Brit. Yeah, you right. be like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah, like yeah. chill out. Yeah, chill yeah. out. So, you know, it, it's it, that yeah. was all. That whole engagement was all bad. So, <laughs> yeah. so I feel like people originally knew you from there. That wasn't in Atlanta and stuff. Mm-hmm. But then, you started managing Jocelyn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, can we talk about how you started managing Jocelyn and how y'all foreseen? her career going like even her having hit songs i ain't gonna lie on love and hip-hop i couldn't see jocelyn having a hit <laughs> she needed now, ballistic now her shit really go up yeah she got ballistic now she lit yeah i like ballistic a lot by mm-hmm. the way for the record yeah he's yeah. a very warm orange soul he's yeah. a very good man and he just sit the back let her shine and yeah he be chilling and low-key probably is part of her security team and everything <laughs> if he <laughs> gotta be <laughs> Yo, people really be going crazy when they see her in person. Yeah. It's weird. No, we've been to a few Jocelyn shows, and the fans yeah. really be fan the fuck <laughs> and out. And Jocelyn came to our event. She came to our After Hours yeah. Atlanta Pride last year. Jocelyn that was got like, that superstar That in should her, be though. weird, like, though. Niggas be like, a fishbowl. It's just like, no, yo, I'm, real. I'm not going mean, to look away. If I look away, I'm going to miss something. They over yeah. here like this. And I've been to a few of <laughs> our shows, so now I just kind of look at everybody else, and they really just be like, just like infatuated with her. But I love that for her. No, I love it for her, yeah. but it's be scary for me sometimes. Like yeah. people lose their mind, they just go for it. For real, they, I'm a toucher. <laughs> ah, I don't like. She don't like all Whoa. that. Yeah, she <laughs> like, don't be on all. What are you doing? Yeah. Like, she booked at me for no reason. I was just. Oh yeah, there. she did cuss for that. You, you was one of them. I was just standing there. <laughs> I was literally just standing there. And on top of what had she said, I said, "Damn, like what I." Do? Brit was about to get fucked up. We did, this, we did this party a couple of days ago for uh, Chris Brown, right? Um, uh, 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 y'all was made called? up? Tycoon. tycoon. Yeah. yeah, Tycoon. They did a lingerie party, and uh, we did this party. Uh, Chris Brown wanted her to come there. And people just be, I just want to touch her. And it be weird. Yeah. And so the whole night, I'm like, stop. <laughs> like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, she doesn't have any clothes on. Like, so you touching her. <laughs> it's going to be grabbing her ass, grabbing her. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. And like what the fuck? I, I don't get what people's. How would you feel if 
every time you walk by somebody just grabbing you. Right. You'd be like, what the hell is going on? I but, can't wait um, this to exhale. No, um, Jocelyn had um, <laughs> asked me to work with her uh, some time ago with regard to just getting, you know, getting some bookings and things like that, which is, that was no problem. Mm -hmm. um, but then she said, she calls me, she's like, I want to go on tour. And I remember me thinking like, and do what? <laughs> right? <laughs> I, I, I thought that. I was like, yeah. and do what? And she's like, I want to do my music. And I'm like, okay. All right. And in my mind, we well, got two songs. So I guess we're going to do a whole tour of two songs. All right. So I'm thinking. And so, but, so I kept flying down to Miami because I couldn't figure out how to do it. I'm like, I don't, I didn't know, honestly, I didn't know what to do, but I am, I'm, you know, my degree is in mathematics. So I'm going to figure it the fuck out. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm like, all right, I got to figure this out. She want to go on tour. All right, I figure out how this going to work. What, do I book stadiums? Do I book venues? Do I book clubs? Like, what do I do? Mm -hmm. And so, um, I had the idea spring break was coming up in Miami. So he's like, hmm, I tell you what, why don't we book a residency in Miami? Which is, I think you ended up coming to one. Yeah, yeah okay. Taboo, right? She was there too. Yeah. So I remember the first day at rehearsals, um, like I, the song, music started playing, but I went out. All right, cool. So I missed the whole rehearsal. The first show I saw of hers was the actual show. And so we booked the show, uh, or excuse me, the show starts and it's sold out. That First of all, I was like, damn, event break? Well, mm -hmm. Is this right? I was like, is this, is this thing right? <laughs> this was before the cabaret or after the cabaret? It was um, the cabaret. I think it was season three of the cabaret. Okay. Yeah, in between it was, but but they hadn't done a reunion yet. Okay. All right. And I was like, I called Joss. I was like, I think we sold out. She's like, really? I was like, yeah. <laughs> like, and I mean, I don't mean tonight. I mean for the month. Oh, that's I was good. like, I think we're sold out. Yeah. And so it was like, oh shit. Okay, cool. Man, I saw the first show. That shit was lit as fuck. Yeah. I, and I didn't, I didn't know the music, but they did. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was like, oh my god, this is great. We had three songs, right? Yeah. And then we just played some other shit at the end, right? right? Well, now that you've seen the show, now it's com completely evolved. No, y'all definitely. <laughs> well, evolved now we it. saw what it was. So then, after those shows sold out, I did what I know how to do. Um, I'm one of the biggest promoters in the country, and I partner with different. The way I built Atlanta Black Pride to be as big as it is. I went to everybody pride, Philly, Charlotte, DC, LA, Baltimore. So I was like, shit, um, I don't know none of these straight promoters, but I, everybody that's lit, if you lit on the gay scene, you know the lit nigga on the straight scene. Facts. You just do. It just it just is what it is. If you the litest, if you the litest gay promoter in your city, mm -hmm. you know the litest straight promoter in your city. Mm -hmm. So I call all my lit gay niggas. <laughs> and all my lit gay niggas connected me, all them lit straight niggas. <laughs> and that's how I did her first tour. Yeah. Well let's um, be clear, the gays love Jocelyn. Oh, it but I need it, but like, I need it, I didn't need gay clubs. I need a straight venue. Right. Mm -hmm. I need straight I need no straight, whatever you want to call them. I need a um mainstream big ass venues. Yeah. yeah. So I call all my gay niggas that They'd be like, well, I got this little club at whole 200, but I know Marco, he got the Palladium, that whole 1,000. I'm like, yeah. connect me with Marco. And so every, every, almost every connection I had on that first tour was I called one of my gay niggas who connected me with the lit mainstream nigga right. in their city. And that's how we got those venues on the first tour. The second tour was just... No yeah, yeah, and it, it it has gotten really good. Yeah, um, the song her catalog keeps growing. Oh, People, I want to say for the record, Doom Cha Cha. <laughs> I told you, you was did, a fucking hit. This was for everybody. Love that song. I was like, yeah. yo, that fucking la da whatever the fuck. Oh, we we didn't know what she was la saying. Da da. I didn't know what saying either. I, hey, I said that Doom Cha Cha Brice, is hard. Brice, Brice, hey, I like that Doom Cha Cha. Yeah, that Doom Cha Cha. So was I hadn't good. heard it at the time. Yeah. I went and looked it up. I was like, what's she talking about? <laughs> uh, I was like, I hadn't heard that Doom Cha Cha. Brit was like, yeah, that Doom Cha Cha. That, 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 that's that's that one. She listened to the, her album. Er, we were uh, album. <laughs> right. We was in um, <laughs> what city was that? Philly, outside of Jersey. We was in Jersey, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember just every time that beginning of the song, yeah. everybody be like saying something, right? And I asked the dude. He's a Spanish guy. He's our sound guy because we were filming uh, on the road to Iconic. Some racist shit. And I asked him. I Philly. said, um, <laughs> I said, Hey, what are they saying? That da 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 And then everybody busted out laughing. Yeah. I'm like, What's funny? They're like, Lauderdale ho. <laughs> right. I was like, what, what, what? He's like, Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. Ho. I don't think I ever heard nobody rap for Lauderdale. I was like, Oh shit! <laughs> They're saying Lauderdale ho. Right. He's like, Yeah. <laughs> Ever since then, I, I was, I was in, look. Ever since then, I was in love. I put it on the back of all the shirts. Look, it's on the back of all the shirts. Oh yeah, you got something. I brought y'all some. 
I brought y'all some gifts. Can you take hey. it out? Can you take it out hey. the bag? Can you take it out the bag so they can see? Yeah, I got you here. Are they able to purchase this? Yes. And tell us what this is, because this is a good segue. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, here you go. I brought you guys some gear. Some cabaret gear. <laughs> cabaret. <laughs> some cabaret gear. Love it. So here. And then on the back of all of our shit. Well, I don't know if you can see it because it's in black, but. Lauderdale, Lauderdale. It got the, I see the L, okay. This other back of mine. Oh, yeah, that's hard. <laughs> that is Okay, hard. let's talk about this picture. That's my hand, you know. Is it? With the I, nails? With the nails? <laughs> no, they, they, the, the graphic designer added that. I took it oh. out. I was at MSR one night, and I was like, we should do an L. Yeah. And I was like, T my graphic designer nasty. Okay. <laughs> All right. Anyway, this is for you guys. Thank I, you. I Thank you. It. We the can't wait know. to wear her mug shot. I can't wait. So, let's talk about the mugshot. Let's talk about the night. Can we get into that, Melissa? Because we've seen our friend. Our people were sending pictures of our friend, our <laughs> business partner, before anything hit the vlogs. Yeah. For real. For real, for real. Okay. So, we all seen the fight with Jocelyn and the crew, mm -hmm. which seemed like it included you mm -hmm. at the Floyd, May Floyd Mayweather fight. Mm -hmm. Can we talk about that and like how real was it? Um, it, it it's interesting because I learned uh, I've heard about this quote unquote um, Instagram algorithm, but I saw it work. I saw it work okay. because at least a hundred videos exist for that night, but you only see two on Instagram. Perspectives, you're saying like yeah. two viewpoints. Right, right. Everybody had a phone up. Yeah. Right. So you know YouTube got all the videos, but mm -hmm. Instagram got two, okay? Yeah. And so it looked like um, Jocelyn just randomly attacking this girl. It looks like I'm jumping in it. It looks like, and none of that is how it went down. Like, And they first, thought she was a man. And they thought I was a man, right? <laughs> but I forgot about that part. Um, Damn. So, no, first of all, this girl throws a water bottle, hits my client in the head, like, from the stand. Like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. uh, two, I don't even know who this is, just FYI. This, I've never seen or heard of this lady before in my entire life. Mm -hmm. And I did not know she had been sending all these threats prior to that on site. As soon as I see her, I'm going to F her up. Da, 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 never, none of that. Mm -hmm. you, I mean, if you watch the show, you'll hear me in the dressing room after all this shit went down. Like, who was that? Right. Who the hell was that lady? <laughs> like, Are what you happened? referring to Big Lex? Yeah, I had no idea okay. who the fuck uh, Little Lex. I had never heard that mm -hmm. name before in my life. Yeah. Okay. And so, um, so I was coming from watching a fight to the back and when I get to the back I saw the outfits that her dancers had on Joc Jocelyn's dancers had on mm -hmm. and I was like ooh she gonna fuck y'all up cause they, they look like they were fighting with each other that's what I thought was happening mm -hmm. so you can hear me in the video like oh Jocelyn gonna fuck y'all up y'all about to go home y'all what <laughs> and I saw Jocelyn's dress I just saw a piece of her dress I was like why is Jocelyn in this mess Yeah. and I look and then I thought the girls were fighting Jocelyn oh. so I literally go over I was like oh shit and the little ex lady uh, that I learned her name later was on the ground, like pulling her hair and they were trying to separate them. And so I grabbed the girl's hands like, yo, yo, get off. And she bit me. And so when she bit me, I kicked her ass, right? And people don't see leg. that part. People right. don't but see that she part. Bit, I had to get a technical shot that night. Yeah. So she bit That's me crazy. on the leg. And I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So whatever, the fight goes on. Um, the There's a... This, I can explain all the scenes that you saw. There's mm -hmm. a white lady that holds, uh, so shit is going down. Yeah. She comes in Jocelyn's face like this with a phone, right? That's, do you remember, it looked like Jocelyn just randomly hit this lady yeah, when she's walking by? Yeah. That's why she hit her. Okay. The lady had a phone in her face like this, like in her face. And she's she like, crazy. So when she saw, so when she saw the bitch again, <laughs> okay, she, she like popped her ass, ass right? <laughs> it's when a bitch gonna throw water, right? Yeah. I missed all of that. All I saw mm. was the water. And at that point, when shit's going left, you don't know who who. Yeah. It's like, and then she goes, which I, I don't even know if y'all heard that or not on Instagram. She threw it, right? She's like, I'm about to go to my car and get that. That's what the lady said. I said, oh, no, you not. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why I chased her. Because I, she literally, oh, when she okay. did that, she goes to walk towards the front she door. She does, yes. I was like, and everything, because see, we're backstage. Nobody has guns. We all went through metal detectors. Right. When she said that, the fight is over and the doors are up. Yep, so you works. could just walk in or out at this mm -hmm. point. And I went to go back to 
to get more into this fight and break it up. Mm -hmm. But then I was like, she said she's going to her car. Now I'm going to knock her out. Yeah. So that's why I was like, if I hit her hard enough, she'll be knocked out. She won't go to her car. Yeah. So that was my whole point with that. So that's why I ran over to her like, uh, Boom. <laughs> knock this bitch out. And then I came back. Yeah. And when I'm, when I'm coming back, I Jocelyn has Lex like in a headlock, right? I see her eyes rolling back in her head. And I was like, you should let her go. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> okay? Yeah. So I literally pulled Jocelyn off of her. Jocelyn lets her go for a split second. Bitch, hit me in the face with a fucking shoe. Right there. <laughs> right there. You still got the mark right there. I said, hey, y'all, our friend. So I yelled at her. I was like, I'm trying to save your life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Her, Jocelyn hit you? No, no the Lex, lady. Oh, the oh, Lex lady, yeah, right? With the, with the shoe. Now, mind you. Jocelyn had her in the head. Like, oh, right. Mind okay. you, going into this whole incident, the Lex lady is like, on site, I'm going to fuck you up. I'm going to make sure your life ends. Yeah, so no, nah, they've like, been gone for a long time. Yeah, yeah, so, and Jocelyn has never responded. Correct. So, now to run into this lady, mm -hmm. and she is not there by herself. She's there with the money team. Right. Whoosh. Nah, sis, we, we gotta, we gotta, and then you're gonna hit us in the head with a bottle. Yeah. So, we don't know where you're coming from at this point. Like, you just, you started all this, and then you're gonna leave and call the cops after all that. Yeah. You hit the lady in the head, you threaten her for three, four months. When you do see her, it is on site. You actually hit her in the head with a bottle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then you attack her. You don't understand that she really about to fight you. Because I don't know what the fuck they thought Jocelyn was going to do. Right. I have no idea what they thought was really going to happen. She obviously wasn't thinking at all. No, Jocelyn really is who she... I don't know <laughs> what... displays herself that, as. Yeah. I don't That's know what, what that lady up. thought was going to happen. Like, yeah. you threaten her for months. You hit her. Then you try to sneak up behind her and got caught up. Got caught up. I don't know what you thought. How do you thought this was gonna go? And then you call the police yeah. after you started all this. That shit was weird. Yeah, when when you told me the story, I'm like, that's crazy because I when I go back and I look at the video, you don't see none of that unfold. It literally just looks like there's more videos on YouTube, but yeah. it was just a uh, it was weird just uh, looking at the algorithm of Instagram. It's a yeah. narrative. Like it's crazy it's how narrative. social media can push a narrative. And if yeah. you're seeing this, you really are seeing this, and you're not even thinking. What else took people you know, that people that, people that I thought I fucked with for years mm -hmm. yeah. was making very nasty comments to me. Yeah, no, and they I was tagging like, me and shit. I'm they like, was threatening your cat. Was bro, it? they started threatening beat up. I said y'all don't took it too motherfucking Man, far. Man, y'all going too far. Y'all went too far now. That's right. a cat lady but, right there, y'all. But they don't have the same energy in person. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. nah, they was texting me. Yeah. They was tagging me. I'm like, yo, I wasn't. I was like, even you guys there. weren't. I was like, you guys weren't there. You don't know what happened. Exactly. I, when the last time you see me out here fighting a femme? Never, never, never. Like yeah. this bitch was out of control. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. she was out of fucking control that night. Yeah. The and is crazy. she just she just lost. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> she lost. It, it wasn't it wasn't that serious. Ballistic didn't jump into it. Right. He he broke it up. None of the niggas jumped into it. They let y'all two square up and you lost. Mm -hmm. It happens like that sometimes. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't get yeah. fucked up. You a girl too, and that's your friend. No, for you can real. step up in there Especially and that if a bitch, bitch too. me. What? But oh, I just, bites me. Hurt like a mother. Why he's hurt like a motherfucker? Nah, it was just wild. It was a wild night, but I literally didn't know who she was until like the next day. Yeah. Wow. And with everything going on so quick and that adrenaline and everything, it's like, hey, anything is up. Like, anything. No, nah, it was wild. Happen. And you got to remember something. What y'all, I don't know what y'all saw, but it was about 300 people back there. Yeah, it was hundreds crazy. of people back there. That's and crazy. that was that fight. It was lots it was of fights going fights. on. Yeah. yeah. So it was just, it was a <laughs> lot of fights going on. Yeah. So it wasn't, y'all saw that one fight that happened but it was so many fights but going on so didn't, didn't zeus partner with this situation they did but we wasn't filming it yeah was, but it's yeah. like damn zeus y'all know all these beefs like this needs to be like security the fuck i don't think up. they knew uh, they, the security was there they just i think security didn't it was know what security, to do it was just <laughs> It was, it was chaos. It was on. very chaotic. Yeah. Like it, it, it was very, very chaotic. I don't think security knows to do. Police obviously didn't know what to do. Right. Like it was just very chaotic. And Zeus wasn't even. Um, they wasn't filming that. They was yeah. just there to film the concert portion of it. Oh, they played and the it. Fight portion of it. They yeah. wasn't that. But that's why you saw that was camera phone footage. That wasn't yeah. It sure was because that, that's not what they were there for. It sure nobody was. was there for that. Like nobody was there to fight. Jocelyn was there. She was so excited. That was that was Jocelyn's first time. They was the time. first time performing together, right? That was her first time performing in uh, an arena. Okay. Okay. So that was her first arena performance. Her first time um, with the girls the on girls a big were stage excited. like that. Yeah. She wasn't there to be fighting nobody right. or, or or no weird shit. She was there to work. Yeah. So 
for that to happen, she was very upset. She was very disappointed. Mm -hmm. um, but you're not gonna just hit her. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you're not gonna just hit her like that. And you're not gonna just hit her in front of me. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, that, that is what it is. So that's for everybody. You're not gonna hit her. You're not gonna okay. hit her in front Period. of me. So, Black History yeah. Month, you better stand up for your people, okay? Yeah, it is what it is. So, all the people that was, uh, all the people in the comments that I didn't give a fuck. Yeah. I didn't give a fuck Say it to my motherfucking face nigga. Melissa okay. you know Melissa you going in felt. Melissa That's how I felt Say it to my face So Jocelyn yeah. did get probation for that Correct Um, She has probation yes Okay mm -hmm. Alright Jocelyn We, we, we fuck Jocelyn. with we But fuck not with for Jocelyn. that Okay Yeah her probation for something else Oh okay Oh yeah. damn boom cha cha Jocelyn, we need it you outside. Not, her, her probation has nothing to do Oh okay With that little Lex situation Little Lex yeah. so, so is it true Go ahead. Oh, is it true that um we're not getting the next season of Jocelyn's Cabaret? Is no, that no season true? five. Why did they say that it got canceled? That's just Instagram doing what Instagram does. So that's not true. No, you saw that though, right? It said it got canceled on. I see random comments, but I assume they think that just because. See, typically the way uh, they film, it'll be like baddies. Oh no, it'll be cabaret and baddies and cabaret and baddies, right? Yeah. But they're doing um, baddies is caught up now. It's five and five, so okay. that's all. But um. I think that's just the way it's a streaming network. That's you know? crazy. Niggas was definitely saying it got canceled. Nah. Well, there y'all go. Jackson Cabaret is not canceled. Nah, what city y'all going five. to next, you know? Yeah. New Orleans? No. Nah. Chicago? No. <laughs> can't tell me. Tell me I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I can or can't, so I won't. I I'll tell you later. Right. I want to see that bounce, that ass. I'm not sure. You're going to see that. I, I'm not sure if I can or can't, but I'll tell you after this. All right. Okay. Yeah. Um, for people that don't know, not only do we do Atlanta Black Pride together, Black Pride Weekend, but we also do Magic City Miami. Yes, <laughs> What's up, ladies? We are taking over Miami for Magic City Miami. We got the flyest ladies in the building, the hottest DJs, best performers. You do not want to miss it for an unforgettable weekend. This is an exclusive event for women who love women. Everybody from all over the country will be partying with us, so make sure you party with us too. We'll see you May 16th to the 19th in Magic City, Miami. So a lot of people don't know that we actually do Magic City Miami Fest mm -hmm. in May together, which is growing to be huge and so much fun. Are you excited for it? Absolutely. I mean, Miami uh, is a special place for me. We started Miami in, actually in 2008, um, 2007. 2007 is when we started Miami. Um, Ironically, <laughs> DJ Dimples was my DJ and Mary Mack was my DJ mm. uh, when we started Miami. So we actually start we actually started Miami Track Scrolls. Um, it, it used to be called um, Sizzle Her. You had Sizzle Miami, which was Memorial Weekend, and you had uh, Sizzle Her, uh, which was uh, the ladies edition. And uh, we had that shit popping. Um, had a little discrepancy with my partner uh, that does Sizzle, and honestly. A lot of my promotional partners for Atlanta Pride Week, Atlanta Black Pride Weekend, were promoters out of D.C. So it was a little tense, you know, with regard to doing Miami Memorial Weekend because that's also Atlanta Black Pride for D.C. as well. Mm, gotcha. So, but we still, you know, I still would do, you know, fifteen hundred girls. Um, you know, we would still do a thousand people at each event. It still was like lit as hell. Um, but then with, compound that with the little discrepancy I had with my partner for Sizzle it made sense um, to move the weekend from Miami Memorial Weekend to move it to Cancun. There now you have to make a distinct right. uh, choice. I wanna go to Black Pride in DC, I wanna go to Cancun, that's a vacation. Mm -hmm. So that just made it make sense. The year that I ended uh, Sizzle Her, um, I had a meeting with, uh, Dimples asked for a meeting with me. DJ Dimples, she actually does the this, this sweet weekend. Um, she asked for a meeting with me. She asked me to partner with her um, and help her do produce that weekend that she does in Miami. I didn't feel like it was appropriate. Uh, we actually met at Willie's at Piedmont Park about that. Um, and just in case you forget. Shout out to Willie's, um, man. Uh, we actually met at Willie's at Piedmont Park. Why do you feel Park. like it wasn't appropriate? Huh? Why do you feel like it wasn't appropriate? Because I ain't no fuck nigga. Like if I work with you, I'm not finna just pop up the next year working with somebody else. 
just and a lot of times my loyalty is a downfall for me oh i feel what you're saying yeah. from the dc yeah crew. Just, gotcha. just a lot of times my downfall is just my loyalty i feel like i would be much more successful in life if i wasn't so damn loyal um and you know it only made sense for me to take back what's mine which is miami um and so i partnered with you know my my, my young bulls um because okay, i'm, I'm old head so I'm, I'm not out here like i was before so it made sense for me to partner with my young bulls um who are like the latest promoters in the country right now um and really put our foot down in miami so that's you know we started magic city miami mm -hmm. um and you see what that's doing um we did it uh a, a year by ourselves and it, it was pretty successful um so then to amplify it even more and really make it make sense we really brought in like heavy hitters like um the brits excels um Girly. Girly, um ceo and then we partnered with a lot of our uh promotional partners in the other cities so it all make it all made sense it, it's 11 weekend it's an artist artist art, artist weekend um we're leading towards introducing like our actual festival to it so it, it just all makes sense it all came to fruition it makes sense um i'm not into reinventing the wheel um if you work good with people you continue doing it and that's just you know that's how that's how it flows and we flow great i can't wait and what the fuck we just did most lit weekend together yeah, too yeah so it came cool, cool. No, and people so said that was the most best lit, time I, I ain't gonna hold you my love is my first love memorial weekend is cancun but i hate being uh i don't want to compete with my friends in DC. Those are my friends. I consider them friends. So it don't, it don't it just didn't feel right. So we'll do our things in Atlanta. If you live in Atlanta, you come to Atlanta, you do that. But um it didn't make sense for us to keep putting up such a big fuss and making their weekends slow and we over here doing the numbers we need to do. It just didn't make sense. So um uh Brit, boss Brit uh does his birthday weekend with her just her personal friends, maybe like 10, 10 11 people. Uh and she I would see in the comments, people would be like, well, why you don't ever invite me? Why you don't ever invite me? Right? So I. They don't think, even got her phone number and wonder why yeah. they didn't get invited. Right on. So, to the cookout. But they want to be there because we'd be lit. Yeah. Right. So, me being the entrepreneur that I am, I feel, I feel like it was like four in the morning. I just randomly text Britt, you should do a most lit weekend. Yeah, it okay? was out of the that. blue. It was like, pretty random. <laughs> yeah, it was, I'm sure it was random. My yeah. great ideas always come random. Yeah. Um, so, I texted her, I was like, you should do a most lit weekend. And she's like, mm, okay, but it was it was real close last year. Last year we didn't have an opportunity to really put it together. Mm -hmm. um, and I told her I would help her. Um, and I think she she wanted to do like uh, Costa Rica or some shit. I'm not familiar I did with. I want to do Costa Rica. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you gotta when you do destination weekends, you gotta do weekends in places that you know that yeah. you understand. You're taking people out of a foreign country. You don't want to have to get in touch with the president to get them back home. Right. So yeah, you you. <laughs> take people places when, i mean if it's gonna be 20 30 people you yeah. can do all kind of weird shit. right but if it's gonna be three four hundred people yeah. you take them somewhere where you can call somebody and make some shit shake so i can make shit shake in cancun yeah that's my homies are there i like cancun it, I it, love things it. I, you, you feel comfortable there because we yeah. can move around there yeah. we can make calls we it's some things we don't have we can make a call we get it um yeah you know so cancun made sense i'm very familiar i did cancun for 10 years yeah. so that's something I felt comfortable taking my friends into yeah. um, and not uh, leaving them in a situation where if something happens, you're fucked. Mm -hmm. um, if you get fucked in Cancun, I can get you out of Cancun. Yeah. So that's where it made sense. And it's beautiful. It's beautiful. The weather was perfect. It was um, perfect. It was. Goodness. You know, Thank you, God. It was yeah. amazing. We we man, we gave niggas a million dollar weekend for yeah. one ninety nine. No, for real, we no. really undersold it. Hey, that's gotta so go. don't that's, expect them prices that's next gonna year. That's gonna have to go up, guys. Hell okay. no. <laughs> people to this day, even when I came back, like the people from Atlanta that came, stopped me in the club. Remember last week, the girl was talking to us. Gotcha. She was like, "That was the best time of my life." <laughs> Whenever y'all drop the next one, I'm coming. I didn't even know y'all was going to be there. I found out. I pulled up. Y'all had all y'all shit on point. Y'all had bottles after bottles after bottles. Yeah. Like, people really enjoyed it. So, y'all, anything we got going on, y'all really need to be a just, part of it. Yeah, and just understand, any, anything that we introduce to you, it's not because we just had this lame brain-ass idea. Right. And we're just like, oh, we'll do this. No, we are researchers. We're educated uh, before we take you places. We have yeah. degrees in this shit. Yeah. Like we're very calculated with regard to what we do. Is nothing that we do is ever random or, 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 or weird or, or just a, a, a wild idea. Yeah. Everything's been calculated. It's been planned. It's been sought out. And understand, y'all came to Cancun for the week for four or five days. We done been four or five times yeah. to make sure that it executes the way you guys wanted to execute. So, 
you know, it, we're never going to have you guys in a situation to where it's trouble for you. And if you get in trouble, I'm the mayor. Okay. So you're, you're Melissa, fix this. We yeah. definitely be going to Melissa, like, phone a friend. Like, yeah. where's Melissa? Yeah. But that's, that's why I fun. really appreciate, like, how we all work together because we do really bust our ass to present these weekends and then the results of it. it like, it'd be so stressful planning it out and it'd be uh, – endless hours we put into it mm -hmm. but the result i always really appreciate it and i appreciate how i am like you never been weird you know what i'm saying like people always talk about gatekeepers you're one person that is a gatekeeper but you have never really stopped us from being on that next level like you didn't have to partner with us for atlanta black pride i'm or damn near 50 Miami. years old yeah what am i about to be 60 walking across the stage with a cane tell nah, us hey that's why i appreciate it because some oh, people me. that are like that are like tenured promoters and lesbians they don't show love like that they want to keep us as a host and a dj they don't want us to become their partners and that's why i've always that's crap that's you. crap behavior mm -hmm. and no nah, it yeah. is and even like that's how i've been a lot of this time yo i'm i'm loyal too but if if there ain't no room at the table, you think I'm not going to eat? Correct. Nah, like I'm going, even, not for nothing, not to go back. But even when you fired me from that Thursday night, me and Britt started our own Thursday night. You know what I mean? Because it's like a lot of people get fired from somebody and, or be kissing somebody's ass. And it's like, yo, I'm not kissing nobody's ass to be at the table when I could provide a meal. To, provide, uh, <laughs> provide the meal. They, they called me when you guys came over there. Um, uh, Jock called me. Jock was a partner in that club. Young Jock was a partner in that club. What club? At, um, over there by Magic City. Oh, yeah. We ain't even asked you about that. Yeah. He called. He said, it's just two lesbians over here <laughs> trying to do a party. Yeah, because he was like his partner for a minute mm -hmm. and helped him renovate it. Remember yeah. when Jock that? helped Jay? Speak easy. Oh. He was speaking, that's how he got that's all those TVs. Oh. He's like, is it cool if they do this party over here on a Thursday? I know you got a Thursday. I was like, it's absolutely okay. <laughs> See, that's <laughs> right? love because you could have been like, nah, dub that. Some nah. niggas would have said, no, dub that shit. Why? People be weird out here. Why would I, I do that? Know. Why would I do that? And the thing that it hurts the most is the community because imagine if we had a mega pride event with all the top promoters in every city bro do you know how lit see that i see that i just don't this is my thing you gotta be really putting in the same amount of work that's the only thing i i need to see mm -hmm. it ain't even about bringing out the amount of people and shit. it's like the same Matching our work yeah, yeah yeah that's the biggest thing but i i'm with the shits i'm with the collaborating yeah, i know yeah, like too. Bro, that's how we do. Yeah, we about to go on tour. We about to be yeah. collabing with a lot of y'all favorite promoters in y'all city. Yeah, so, so. You know what I'm, y stay tuned. I'm just looking forward to the rest of this year. We just getting started. Mm -hmm. 2025, we already planning for. We already there. Like it's crazy. Yeah. Um, and I, I know Britt Brit, Brit wants to. I had to get Britt together. Britt was like, "Hey, I want to go to DR next year." I'm like, "No, baby, yeah, <laughs> we're not going to DR, DR next year." But it makes we, sense. We to will stay go to Cancun. DR. It makes sense. We will go to DR. Yeah. But to go to DR, see. Lisa Cox was my mentor, mm -hmm. and she taught me something because uh, I always thought you can just pop up in the city and do what you want. She said, no, 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 no. You have to go be in that city for weeks yeah. to see what's going on, sometimes months. Mm -hmm. I've been to Cancun for months. I've stayed there for months. Mm -hmm. We building in Cancun, building our relationships, got, got resources out there. Cancun so lit. Sense. Cancun is lit. And, and at first, I was like, I don't want to go back to Cancun, but I had a fucking ball, bro. And Cancun staff. It's fun. It was fun. They were they friendly. Fun. They were welcoming. I've been to 38 different countries in my life. Mm -hmm. uh, the hospitality in Cancun is unmatched. It's, yeah. it's um, a fact. And it's weird because it's just Cancun. Right. And you would think it would be in, in like, you know, other countries. It would be way better. Yeah. It ain't. It, it, it's weird. I don't know yeah. what why those people are so just conditioned to be great people. Uh, and it doesn't feel racist. I just went to Hawaii. Yeah. And it felt weird. It felt racist over there. Um, mm. And I'm like, damn, I've always been Hawaiian. And it never felt like this before. Damn. Um, but Cancun yeah, we went like, to the Bahamas. All the dudes was hollering at my girl. Like these Cancun, them guys is not worried about y'all bitches. Nothing. No, like, they just got they real want, annoying. They want their money. Yeah, they want their money, and they want to make sure you don't go tell their boss that you did a that they did a shitty job. And the customer service is amazing. Um, they go above and beyond to make sure that your your group is okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it's just so many things that we didn't get to do. Um that we're gonna to add to our itineraries going forward. So, and then once we burn Cancun out, we'll move on to DR. Yeah, I'm you cool know. with going back to Cancun yeah. next year. We'll burn, we'll burn Cancun out a couple and years. Y'all better be there. <laughs> Crazy. Most lit weekend, Atlanta Black Pride weekend, Magic, Magic City, City, Miami. Miami. Hey, I, na I named most lit weekend. Just, you did. Yeah, so y'all yeah, know. Yeah, nah, did. it, it but, flowed amazing. But honestly, yeah. it's, 
like the most lit international yeah, weekend yeah. in the it's country. Like, like the, it's the name so is perfect. It's literally the most lit, the most lit. weekend in the country. Like yeah. it's it was so lit. It was so lit. It was so lit. This it lady was, was like, she's like, yo, I'm 42, and this is the best thing I've ever been to in my life. Like best birthday ever. I'm like. That's, that warms my And let heart. me map something out for you guys. I've been I did Cancun for ten years, right? Mm -hmm. And in my tenth year, I, I said ten was it for me. Um, most lit weekend, mm. first year, you guys supported me more than any of my partners have ever supported me in my ten years of doing mm. uh, Cancun. So typically, my trip sucks to Cancun. Mm. Everybody else has the time of their life. They get married and engagements, all kind of shit, and I'm exhausted. Because mm. I'm setting up, I'm breaking down, I'm organizing, I'm uh, make sure DJ da 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 da. Yeah. Whereas in a true partnership, uh, you guys actually hold your weight. Mm. A lot of my partners don't hold their weight. I've had probably one or two other partners in my life that held their weight. Uh, one being CJ uh, Jones. One being um, shout out CJ. That's Julius. The one that fired me out, outside of that, yeah. my partners don't really hold their weight. And I'm sorry love if y'all take it personal them. if you're watching yeah, this. The one that fired but me. outside of that, my partners don't typically hold their weight. Um, you guys. You, you, and Girly hold your weight. And I know you guys yes. didn't understand Girly in the beginning. Um, at no, we, we, it wasn't we uh, understand it. We just didn't know her. Same thing. Yeah. And it's, it's Same thing. Just um, in general, it's dope to find a team that everybody is a master at something differently. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I think that helped us a lot, too. Yeah. Um, I, what I saw in Girly, because I didn't know Girly like that either. Mm -hmm. But I, I watched her for maybe eight years. See, we did not know her at all. Yeah. I'm a watcher. I'm a watcher. Yeah. Um, I'm a watcher. So before I engage with you, it's not. It's never random. Mm -hmm. um, it's never ever ever random. It's very either I help make you do what you do, or I watch you do what you do, and I think I can help make you better. I'm never gonna partner with anybody that I don't think I can make better, and I don't think can make me better. Mm -hmm. um, I don't work with workers. Um, uh, that's just not how I move. Um, I work with people that may look like a worker. But I know that they can run this shit if I don't show up tonight. Um, that's the kind of people that I partner with. Um, if I hire you, that's something different. Mm -hmm. But like working with you, uh, working with people, I work with Showtime because I know honestly, if I really don't show up, this party gonna keep moving. Showtime got it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I know if I don't show up, CJ got it. I know if I don't show up, y'all got it. If I don't show up, girly got it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So that's the type of people that I, I um, like to work with. Um, that makes sense, why yeah. you show up at like two in the morning? Yep, she know we got it. It's some bullshit, y'all, that's some bullshit. She's like, everything's great. We're like, bitch, we just stressed ourselves out, but yes, it is amazing. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm 50, I should be able to show up at one, yeah. one two exactly. in the morning. At this point, God damn, yeah. I still gotta open the party. Yeah, you like, give me on. hope yeah. to look forward to 50, okay? Yeah. I'ma just You give me hope to look forward? I'm playing, bitch. sorry. <laughs> I mean, but Excel at 50, should you still be opening the club? No, I feel you. Nah, at 50, should you still, um, you you shouldn't still be doing those things. I I um I don't take I stopped taking um I stopped taking DJ gigs about eight nine years ago. Right, mm -hmm. I would get called for different gigs, but I would show up with my DJ, and niggas would be like the person that booked me would be like, well, why they playing? I'm like because this is DJ so and so, and then at the end of the party, they'd be like, man, who is this? Yeah, I'm like I'm trying to tell you. You're booking me because of my name, not because of my skill. Yeah. You're booking me because of my following. You're booking me because of what you think I can bring. You're not booking me because of what I can do. My DJ is better than me. Mm -hmm. This person is better than me. Mm -hmm. They're better at this than me. This MC, this host that you you booked me, but I brought my own host yeah. to host the host of hope for me because my host is better for me. And that way, th th but then eventually I got to a point where I just stopped taking gigs because yeah. I'm like they weren't getting it. Um, well, start doing that again so, and just bring me an Excel if you don't mind. No, because this. but, it, but <laughs> no, I get it though because it is all right. So first of all, like things that I experience, there's so much I'm working on to make the party, the actual party dope. It's hard to focus on music. Mm -hmm. It's hard to be up on the newest shit. What we on calls every single day. We working on big shit. Done put down ten thousand dollars on this venue and making sure the couch is in it is in there. I ain't got time. <laughs> to go over the music tonight, I need to make sure these fifteen thousand dollars of yeah. whatever. And then, yeah. then it's like during our parties, it's a lot moving. Like I literally delivered the bo a bottle the other day, <laughs> five minutes before I had to DJ. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like it, it think, is a it is a lot. People also think DJing is just playing music, um, and no shade to you, hosting is way easier than DJing. People think that. Um, I, I promise it you, is. you're moving around the crowd, you get to go pee, you get to go drink, it's, you get to go uh, okay, say hey to so-and-so, you get to be with the celebrity. 
um, okay. unless we bring a celebrity yeah, to the I DJ do. booth. That's why I always bring a celebrity to the DJ booth. FYI, yeah. but um, I try to always bring it to you. It, it people think Girl, that a whole pride went by. I ain't have not one picture with celebrities. You had all yeah. at, at oh at oh we had like five celebrities. I ain't getting not one picture. People think that, everybody too. people think DJing lying. is playing the oh. hot songs, right? It, it's not. It's a lot of work. Yeah. You got to get the the mix. You got to get the one that don't say some stupid shit at the beginning. You got to realize that so-and-so dropped this at midnight and everybody know about it. So you got to have that song. You got to have the acapella. You got to have the instrumental just in case you want to bring this with this. Like, it's so much work. DJing is not just the weekend. I can tell the DJs that just open their uh, controller on my event and ain't work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I can tell those DJs because yeah. they, they just playing the same fucking mix. They playing the same thing. Like, you got to work. DJing is work. Yeah, that's why sometimes, work. like, when we try to interview people before our parties, like, sometimes I'll be like, bro, my, my space not there. Like, I got, like, low-key, it'd be a lot of pressure on the DJs, and I don't think we realize that because a lot of DJs handle it well. But it's like, bro, I can't go talking to people for 45 minutes and then jump right on DJing. Like, I got to catch a vibe. I got to be, like, in a zone. I got to see what this DJ plays so I don't play all 10 of the songs her ass done played. Yeah, but, that'd be fucked up too. Yeah. I, my first big DJ gig um, was given to me by Lisa Cox. I played at uh, The Warehouse, which tracks Warehouse. If you entered on Lucky Street, it was called a Warehouse. If you entered on Marietta Street, it was a gay club. It was called Tracks. It was, but it was the same club. Are you talking about like where Paradise at? Uh-uh, it's where um, Paradise owned own it. <laughs> Cause I've seen a party that there called, that you That was did. called was um, Attractions. Tracks was two doors down, it's now a parking lot. Oh, uh, we didn't okay. understand so it at the time the aquarium was coming over. We would have bought it, but oh. whatever. Uh, anyway, but um, <laughs> uh, Ludacris was the host. Ludacris and this dude named Poon Daddy was the host. Poon and Daddy. the dude that ran the kitchen name was Lil John, And his uh, backup cooks was the Eastside Boys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hold up. Nah, it's real like shit. Like the Lil John and the Eastside Boys? Real shit. He That's made the best. Crazy. Lil John made the best wings in America. That is um, crazy. The club, used to, the club used to be called... Uh, the warehouse is how straight people knew it. Yeah. Gay people knew it as tracks. Okay. All right. And on the straight nights, uh, again, the host was Ludacris. Um, Chris Lover Lover. We called him Chris Lover Lover. Yeah. And uh, we call him Ludacris now. His name was Chris Lover Lover, mm -hmm. and Poon Daddy was the host, and the cook was Lil John. That's crazy. All right. Bro. <laughs> yeah. And China White would come in sometimes and host. I don't know if you, yeah, that may be before your time. I don't know China White. But anyway, um, so but yeah, just things were just. Uh, DJing is just different. My first big break as a DJ was uh, Lisa Cox gave me. She did the lesbian night at this place called The Warehouse mm -hmm. on a Friday. And she moved from this club called Jaguars. And um, I remember I was playing upstairs, house music only, upstairs. And it was oh, like, house music. it was like 20 <laughs> niggas up there, right? Yeah. That's where I was at for like from 10 a.m. to like 2 a.m. Mm -hmm. 2 a.m. Wait, just come down. She said, come play downstairs. And I'm like, uh -oh. you know, I ain't seen the club all night. So yeah. to me, it was empty, right? I get downstairs. Cool. It was made about 2,500 bitches. Only girls. 2,500, right? I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> so I hook up my CDJs because we didn't have control. Yeah. We were CDs. Yeah. Put my CD in, right? Put my CD. And I remember I was about to play my first song, right? You were DJing with CDs? I was to play with CDs. Yeah, CDs I had was after cases, techniques. Cases. Oh, and I was modern, dog. No, God, no, no baby. Awesome. I was modern. Yeah. I had the first CDs. Everybody else had records. That's All right? crazy. And I'll never forget this. The crowd was going. And I went to drop that track, and I fucking hit eject instead of play. <sighs> and that was CD probably the worst out. night of Honestly, looking back, that was my worst night of my DJ. I life. had a scary <laughs> moment like that, too. In a it was the worst night of my night. DJ. Life. And Triple J. DJ Doc, these were big DJs at the time. It was Triple J, DJ Doc, and Frank Ski. Frank Ski was actually DJ at the time. Yeah. Now, I don't think he DJs anymore. But anyway, and I just remember they was all, I love, looking back, how they handled it, yeah. they were just all like, I was like, I didn't know what to do. Like, duh, put the CD back in, bitch. Right, play, right, right, right. I was like, huh, huh. And they, none of them moved. They was just like, man, put that shit back in. Come on now. You all right. Right. You all right. They, they didn't flinch. They were just like, you all right. You all right. You all right? Yeah. You all right? And here go these niggas, 2,000 deep. No music! <laughs> no music! I was like, ah! Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm sweating. I'm like, fuck hey, I had, Hey, I had to tell Bert about that. <laughs> and when we first started going, like, because shit be happening. It's shit, shit, my shit just went, my hard drive just went out this weekend, but now she hold it down where motherfuckers don't even know. But she'll be like, 
<laughs> Technical you, difficulties. Yeah, like give us a second. No, guys. no, yeah, right. do anything that. else. It's, yeah, I know. talk about the bar. Yeah, yeah I, know, party I know next that week. Now. Not anything. The, the girl will shout out. Majesty Miami, most lit. We got land black pride. Give away a hundred dollars. I don't give a fuck what nah, you do. She, she do great now, but boy, and then I don't know if y'all know, but as a DJ, oh that boils our fucking blood. We already stressed the fuck out, and then you said, bruh. Come on now, <laughs> like clean yeah. Excel really helped me to be a better host because I never had a DJ really coach me. Like even when we started at like Rain, she would tell me like, "Yo, you shouldn't just see the lyrics. Like I'm gonna start dropping the beat here. You can say a word there." But like she really coached me to be a it's, better MC. It's a lot going on up there. Yeah, it's a lot. the crowd is just having a good time. They're just having a, a good like time. you might need an MC to say something, right? Where they at? Where they at? What do you What do you do? What's the rule of thumb if you need a DJ to come back to the booth? What do you do? Uh, MC to come back. MC to, to come booth. What do you do? What you mean, like cut the music real quick or something? Nah, like, what, you need an MC to come to the booth, you cut their fucking mic off. Oh. Cause they come back oh. frantic. Oh, yeah. Hey, my mic not working. Oh, it's fast. Great, nigga, she I need you to say. Right. She never cut mine off, but she no. cut other people's off. But I cut their mic off for other reasons. <laughs> oh, I, I, that's the thing, I, when DJ Excel is playing, I'm a different per like you're not about to be screaming, doing the most. That's bitch. how you got into it with uh Yeah, I I I got into an argument with some a host at phase one. I got into it with Steezo. <laughs> yeah, remember. bitch. Steezo was an MC. It was, she had a song. We was at some club, Cosmopolitan on the East Side. Cosmopolitan. And I didn't know her. I didn't know her. I didn't know her. I was just like, oh hell no, I cut the music off. I said, this is the worst song I've ever heard in my life. Oh. Right? And I cut her music off. And I feel like after that point on, she became a better fucking rapper. Yeah. <laughs> right. Not you helped her. No, really. Because like, yeah, everything she put out after that, I thought was decent. Yeah. But that night, I was like, uh, yeah, no, nah, that's not going to work. Damn. All right, next. Damn. Hey. Nah, a host yeah. was saying something smart to me on the mic, saying something smart. Bitch, Bitch do you know I control? One thing I Dummy. I could control this whole atmosphere yeah. right now. This not I can the close time. Was I there? Oh, no, you, you wasn't there. Like, well, I feel like some well, um, nobody was there. That the DJ I was can cool. close your club. Yeah, literally. They could do Why? something like turn the music off and take the one chord. Yeah, a DJ, the one chord the is one crazy. Because no, one all clubs got one chord. Oh, I do shit. I stop at like four play Thursday. Somebody got smart. And I turned the music off. I think it was for a play. Except I don't Bitch, play when she behind the I booth. turned the music off and said, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. There's something in me that's like, yo, you're being very disrespectful. Yeah, nah, right MCs now. be over there drunk, yeah. running around, doing weird shit. But um, nah, man, I just feel like this whole um, Atlanta game, what you guys are doing in no Oklahoma is really dope. Thank you. Um, this whole um, Atlanta game, I feel like Atlanta is like... It was used to be what San Francisco. I feel like Atlanta is like the game mecca of LGBTQ urban. We're doing great. <laughs> We're urban doing great. black black gay Hollywood. America, right? Yeah. We're doing great. And we really appreciate you like, you know, putting us in a position to win and mm -hmm. trusting us and you know, showing up at 2 a.m. actually means a lot to me cuz it it does show like you trust us. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Cuz you could be hovering over us, but you just let us do our own thing and, and that is a really good um honor to have. Mm -hmm. No, nah, I'm not a I'm not a micromanager. Yeah. I micromanage if I'm the only manager, but I'm not gonna fuck with niggas that can't manage for us. Mm -hmm. Um it doesn't make sense. It doesn't it just at, at this age, it doesn't make sense. Like it doesn't make sense for me to be sweating. It, it just doesn't make sense. Yeah. And now at your age, there should be somebody twenty, nineteen, that you sneaking in the club that's doing, you know, this stuff. I you know, I, I snuck the Mikos and the mm. Moes and the Ninos. I, I snuck them niggas in the club when they wasn't 21. Yeah. You know, they was in the club, uh, Cadillac, before she was 21. Cadillac was 16 Shout years Cadillac. old. Cadillac. Damn. Cadillac, Cadillac was 16 years old That's crazy. <laughs> um, running the door. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Um, you know, uh, Mo was 17. Uh, Puff, uh, Miko, uh, too cute. Uh, you know, some of these people aren't with us no more. They were all kids mm -hmm. um, uh, doing these things. So just now, and then I see some of the people that have just out of here, like the breezy. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember that night, breezy, you fighting, fist fighting, CJ, I'm pulling you out the crib. Like, what is y'all doing? Yeah. Now, this nigga's out of here. Asian, out of here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, just watching these people evolve. So very proud of these people. So very proud of you guys. Um, Thank you. And you obviously need to be doing that now for. The young, the young bulls. Yeah, I need me a little sixteen-year-old to come uh, wipe my mic off or something. Okay. I don't know. Set your <laughs> boards wipe. up. No, really. For real. Absolutely. Yeah, the Excel should not be yeah. setting up a board anymore. Yeah. So not. there should be a young DJ 
that wants to learn, that wants to play in this environment, that will never get the opportunity to play in this environment unless Excel says it's okay. Um, Excel for me, um, there was a year, uh, whatever year that was, that I, that I feel like I put you on to pride. Um, I had a lot of niggas that wanted to play. They wanted mm -hmm. to, uh, let me, I'm the lead, I'm the lead DJ, right? Mm -hmm. I can't remember what you did. I don't know if you sent me something or if I heard you play. Um, I think I heard you play. Uh, yeah. Maybe at the Soul Bar or something like that. Well, I was doing Halo. I came in because, like, somebody introduced me to Chris introduced me to you. Okay. And I, when I first moved to Atlanta, I would get dressed and go out <laughs> to mm -hmm. clubs. Mm -hmm. And Same every way. time, mm -hmm. just get dressed to make myself stand out. Mm -hmm. And shout out to Chris because Chris came up to me and was like, yo, you a rapper or something? And I was like, nah, I'm a DJ. Mm -hmm. And she said, let me introduce you to N. Introduce me Chris. to you. And you said, hey, come in and try out for an hour. It was me and another DJ that both came Adore. in. No, it was a it was a it was a guy DJ that came to try out for like an hour for you. And I did an hour and ever since then I was doing Thursdays with you too mm. until I got fired. But um <laughs> <laughs> but um that was for like two years at least, you know what I'm saying? But but from there I feel like that's where we built you had a manager, I remember that. Yeah, Diana. I, yeah, I, I just <laughs> shot Diana. Yeah, I just remember um, <laughs> uh, uh, I was put, you know, because I do my schedules. Yeah. Whole team was, who the fuck is this? No, we need to put this person in this position. We need to put that person. This person needs to be the, head, the uh, closing DJ. Yeah. This person needs to be the main DJ. And I listened to everybody, and I was just kind of like, I remember I slept on it, and I was like, yeah, nah, it's going to make so. Right, That's lit. and um, you gave me good ass. Uh, but what I do remember, what I liked, um, is I feel like a lot of she was trying to work with a lot of people, and they were all like, nah, nah, mm -hmm. nah. All of them was like, nah. I was like, good, right, <laughs> good, good. <laughs> okay, good. Let me take it to myself. Um, and um, I remember that Thursday you came in with a banner or something, right? Oh yeah, hey, hey, your manager brought in a banner like yeah, you should have set up, right? Yeah, you gonna know who I am. It's just my first gig. Y'all gonna know. And not for nothing, the Excel used to let me host with her. Yeah. This before you, people you was like, these no, she brought a banner here. They were texting me. She brought a banner here. They was mad and, about and it. And it's taking up the space on the side of the DJ booth because you know Halo had that long DJ booth at the top of the steps. Right? Oh, that Halo. Okay. It's yeah. taking up space. And the DJ booth. Da, 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 da. I said, well, what the banner say? Like, right. do it say like something else going on other than what we got going on? Right. It was like, no, it says her name. I was like, <laughs> and I laughed. I was like, good job, kid. Right. I was like, good yeah, job, Yeah, I kid. brought my banner into MSR and one time, and like the way Kia looked at me, she 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 let it slide, but she, I just felt like, she me. don't bring this she banner called, back no, she here. Called, she called me. You be letting Excel bring it. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I'm like they all because this is the thing, it's, it's two different things. Because I'm always respectful, but I'm trying to build my name as a DJ, and other promoters think, since I throw another party another night that I'm trying to get you here. And it's really like, yo, I'm really just trying to be a dope DJ right now and let y'all know. I'm telling you, that night when they called me, they was like, and I said, well, what does the band say? <laughs> like, cause I'm thinking about to say, uh, you know, some other events or some shit. Yeah, it was like, right. it has her fucking face on it and it says her name, <laughs> I said. And I said, about right. and in my mind, I was like, good job, kid, right? Yeah. But then I told whoever, I can't remember who called, was it Jamie's? I can't remember who called. I was just like, it's fine, it'll be fine. Yeah. You're gonna let her do that? I was like. I think she already did it. It's okay. <laughs> right? I, was like, I think it's okay. It'll be you, don't right. add, you don't ask for permission. You ask for forgiveness. Like, I think she already did it. It'll be okay. They were like, but we can't even get in the booth. This fucking banner's right here. I said, like, why are you even trying to go to the booth? Period. You're right. not even the host. Like, what are you doing? All right. I used to love Halo. Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah, I, I did. Too, pretty man. girl hideout. Some, we need to do a pretty girl hideout reunion. Shit. There. Halo was a vibe. Yeah. up in Halo. But um, overall, and like we brought you because we thought you would be great, especially someone to highlight for Black History Month. Just because, yo, when we talk to you, there's just so much shit we learn every time because you've been in the game so long, work with so many different people, gay, straight, all the above, and like you said, when you really the head motherfucker in charge you know everybody you know what i mean so we appreciate you and just wanted to make sure that we shine some light on you on black history month yeah. and thanks for coming because we know you be you don't really talk a lot so we really appreciate you sitting down and have a conversation with us <laughs> Phone been going real. crazy. Everybody mad at me, but it's all right. <laughs> girl, hey, we got at least thirty name drops in this episode, oh, y'all. Yeah. Y'all, a lot of editing. Edit what you want, beat, keep what you want. <laughs> okay, feel that. <laughs> Don't say it to my face. But they got okay. <laughs> and that's how we going. And thank you. Hey, it's no homo show.
whole lot of gay shit. Whole lot of gay, 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 gay. gay. I like that. Boss Brit. We certified. And DJ Excel. Oh.